back to our Sunday night baseball coverage. The tarp is off. They've sang the anthem. We're about ready to head out to the vet for the Phils and the Cardinals. The delayed start with the rain delay. Before we take you out to John Miller and Joe Morgan, though, let's catch up on some of the big games in the majors this afternoon. And we start with the series in the AL East between the first and last place teams. But the Yankees know that the Jays are the team that they fear the most in the Eastern Division. They pounded them on Saturday to take the first game of the series. What kind of pitch was Billy Connors calling for? I don't believe that's what he had in mind. Paul Bowden hit a two-out double. Now he moves 90 feet away and another wild pitch by Scott Kamenicki. Joe Carter gets a run home without getting credit for an RBI. Jays take a one-nothing lead. Then Kamenicki settled down. Goes high in the zone to Sean Green. And then he was being matched by Pat Henkin. Two aboard in a one-all game, and Henkin smokes Danny Tartable. Three at ball through eight. Kamenicki was fine except for the wild pitches and this mistake. But a man aboard, Devon White, hits his ninth home run of the year. The leadoff batter now has 33 RBIs, had three hits in the game, but the Yanks weren't done. Tying runs aboard, facing Tony Castillo. And Randy Velarde bounces into a game-ending double play. Castillo's first save since 1990. The Jays take three out of four. They're back to break even. And they're within five and a half of New York in the East. They are now just two and nine in June, are the Yanks. They have not won a series in their last four. At Fenway Park, the fading Red Sox take it on Ben McDonald. They had rain problems of their own. And they're also trying to deal with Ben. Going for win number nine and some trickery to get Otis Nixon. So with just one out and a man in scoring position, he takes the man off and then finishes off the hit dog. Mo Vaughn. Top of the second, Nate Minchie facing Brady Anderson. And the original Red Sox bangs one into the gap, gives the Orioles a 2-0 lead. It was 5-1 by the time Joe Hesketh came on, and he couldn't get the lefty. Rafael Palmero homers again in the series. 6-1 O's. Still in the fourth. The rains came down for a couple of hours. They delayed this one. Two hours and one minute later, they resumed, and so did the onslaught for the O's. Cal Ripken goes well off the monster, hit a light tower, a two-run poke. The Orioles blast the Red Sox again. This one, eight to four. They sweep a four-game series. The first time they have won a series from the Boston of more than three games since 1980. They are now within a game of the lead in the East. Top game in the National League. Astros within a game of lead in the Central, taking on the best team in the majors, the Braves. Greg Swindell in early trouble. Bill Pakoda, the sparsely used reserve, bangs one off the scoreboard. McGriff and Justice give Greg Maddox a 2-0 lead. He did the rest. Consistently got out of trouble. Fred McGriff gets Ken Caminiti, who is me. Javi Lopez holds on. Then Maddox uses his savvy to pick off another potential runner, James Mouton, making a rookie mistake. And then facing Andujar Cedeno, ends the inning with a strikeout. He had five in the day, but came up with some in big moments. He also gave up 11 hits, though. But every time he put runners on, he got out of trouble. Three double plays in the game. Then on the ninth with two outs, he's going for the complete game against Tony Eusebio. And the easy grounder to Lemke Maddox goes the distance. His fourth complete game. He is the first pitcher in the majors to win 10. And those include six in a row. He has the Major League's leading ERA. It is lowered now to 138. That's some of what's going on in the Major Leagues. I'll keep you posted on that Rangers-Royals game, which now Cone is leading 2 to nothing as he tries to equal Maddox with 10 wins. Right now, it's time for John and Joe. Let's go out to the vet. And welcome back to Veterans Stadium here in Philadelphia. And despite the thunderstorms, despite the lateness of the hour with the work day tomorrow, as you can see, a huge crowd is gathering here at the Vet to watch the National League champion Philadelphia Phillies and the St. Louis Cardinals. In the National League Central, the newly formed Central Division, the St. Louis Cardinals are out of the thick of things. Cincinnati lost today. Houston lost. And there are the Cardinals. They can move within just two games of first place. Cincinnati with a win here tonight, which would also give them three out of four over the Phillies at the vet this weekend. Meanwhile, in the National League East, the Braves won. The Expos lost. The Expos are three games out. And there are the Phillies. They're struggling with a win tonight. They would be ten games out. But again, remember, you don't have to finish first necessarily to go to a postseason. They would be seven games out of a wild card berth at this point. 
I'm John Miller along with Joe Morgan. We've waited out the rain. And Joe, we've gotten information that the rain is gone. We don't have to worry about it, so we're going to get this ball game in without any kind of incident. Now, we've got a great matchup tonight. Danny Jackson, 7-1. and one. Again, Bob Tewksbury, an eight-game winner going for the Cardinals. Well, I think Danny Jackson has really been helped by his change up this year. He's gone to the circle change, which has really helped him. In the past, he's thrown basically fastball and a slider. Now he throws a sinker and not the regular fastball to go along with the changeup, and that has made him very successful so far. He's 7-1. And, and he has been uh, something special, and Johnny Padres, who himself threw one of the great changeups uh, that anybody ever threw, and really knows how to teach that pitch, and uh, Darren Dalton was telling me that he threw it occasionally last year, and he hasn't really truly mastered it this year, but he'll throw it at almost any time. Well, Darren Dalton knows how to work the pitchers. As I've said before, I am really, I, I think Darren Dalton's one of the most underrated players in all of baseball, because not only is he a team leader on this ball club, but he has to also call the pitches for a beleaguered staff this year, and I think he's really done a great job with Danny Jackson. All right, now Jackson tonight, 7-1, and one, and Bob Tewksbury, an eight-game winner, and he's fallen upon hard times lately, but nonetheless, when he's on, he can be as tough as anybody. Well, Bob Tewksbury needs all four of his pitches to be effective. He has been getting over only two or three of them over lately. He throws a fastball, change-up, curveball, and a slider. So he needs all of those pitches to be successful because he does throw a lot of strikes. And any time he gets too much of the plate, he gets hurt. All right, so we've got the Phillies and the Cardinals coming up here from the vet. And uh, we've got Danny Jackson now having concluded his warm-ups, walking in with Johnny Padres, the pitching coach out there. And uh, so we are just a couple of minutes away from getting started here. The Phillies and uh, the St. Louis Cardinals. And uh, just a few minutes ago, we couldn't see downtown from here. So heavy was the rain and the overcast. To soothe athlete's foot, to relieve the burning, the itching, Desinex does it. But to cure athlete's foot, to kill the fungus that causes it, Desinex does it. Only Desinex has UDA, proven to both soothe the itching and burning and cure even tough athlete's foot cases. To soothe and cure athlete's foot, Desinex does it all. And for jock itch, Cruex is the number one cure. Cruex cures jock itch. Every year, American business wastes millions of dollars on international calls by using the wrong long-distance company. Now you don't have to waste that money. Introducing MCI's Proof Positive Worldwide. Save up to 50% off typical international calls around the world. Call by June 30th and get one month of free long distance. Call MCI now and put your money back in your business. I was in town for business, and thanks to the rental car, I had time to stop by the old neighborhood. The place hasn't changed a bit. Room for one more? Can't be the shoes. Gotta be the shoes. Dollar is right on the airport, right on the money, with unlimited mileage and locations worldwide. Hey, it's got to be the shoes, right? Nope, it's the rental car. Yeah. Call Dollar, the official car rental company of the NBA. This bench gets a professional finish with Krylon spray paint. No runs, no drips, no errors. Dries to the touch in minutes. The other brand's still tacky. Wow! What a game. Good game, Mr. Euchre. He's a lot tougher than he looks. For a fast, smooth, professional finish, get Krylon. The Philadelphia Phillies are checking the field here at Veterans Stadium. I'm John Miller along with Joe Morgan. We're just moments away from getting started. There's Joe Torrey. His ball club has not hit well so far, and yet still they're in the thick of things in the central. Here's the batting order now for Torrey's Cardinals. It will be Bernard Gilkey left field. Geronimo Pena second base. Greg Jeffries, who is hitting at first base. Todd Zeal hitting cleanup. He is not hitting. Mark Witten recently back from the disabled list. Brian Jordan in center giving Langford the night off. Terry McGregor. Griff, the catcher, giving Pagnazzi the night off. The Wizard, Ozzie, is at short, and Bob Tewksbury bats ninth. On the mound, Danny Jackson, seven wins, and a loss for the Philadelphia Phillies with a 3.12 earned run average. And uh, we asked Danny Jackson maybe to give us a rundown on his repertoire of pitches. This is a two-seamer right here. 
they throw down away from a right-handed hitter. And this is a four seam where I run it in to a right-handed hitter. And then uh, change-ups right here, circle change that everybody throws nowadays. And then uh, my slider's right here for where I throw my slider. Well, as Jackson mentioned, the pitch of the early 90s was a split-fingered fastball. Most pitchers tried to throw it. I believe now you're going to see more and more pitchers throw the changeup because it becomes more effective when pitch hitters are swinging from their heels and trying to hit the ball out of the ballpark. And that changeup has made him a much better pitcher this year. And let's take a look at the Phillies defensively. And Duran Dalton is the key not only to their team offensively but defensively as well. He's the guy that has to make all the calls. And of course, he has made a lot of different changes this year because they've had a different pitching staff than they thought they were going to have rotation-wise at the beginning of the season. He has had to adjust to each and every pitcher. And he's done a great job. And the throw goes down to second base to Mickey Morandini. And we're ready to get started here. Bernard Gilkey will stride to the plate. Danny Jackson, he has really been the savior for the Phillies this year. The Phillies five-man rotation, which pitched so effectively last year. Well, right now, Danny Jackson is the only one of the five still pitching for the Phillies. Here's Bernard Gilkey hitting 259, four homers, 24 battered in. Got a lot of speed. But if he was going normally, he'd be hitting well over 300 right now. So he's one of the guys slumping. Ball one. John, one other thing to look for in this ball game is the defense of the Phillies. They have allowed more unearned runs than any other team in the league, and their defense has always been suspect. Even last year at the beginning of the season, they made a lot of errors. But you can't do that when your pitching staff is struggling. Of course, Danny Jackson has pitched well and been able to pitch out of trouble, but take a look at their defense early, and we'll be able to see how they're going to play tonight. Two balls and a strike now. You see that 40 unearned runs allowed by the Phillies so far. And ball three. Geronimo Pena is on deck. Jackson was uh, one of the very fine uh, starting rotation members for the Phillies last year. Into right center field, into the alleyway. This one will go to the wall. Dykstra over to play the carom, and Gilkey pulls up at second with a double. Mentioned Bernard Gilkey is a very good hitter, and the count was three and one. He didn't get to swing three and zero. Oh, that was three and one, and he found the gap in right center field. But to be a good hitter against left-handed pitching, if you're right-handed, you need to go a little bit that way because the ball tails away. See, it's over the outside part of the plate, and he just goes that way into right center field. And he finds the gap. And that's one of the reasons he has been a 300 hitter the last couple of years, because he does hit the ball all over the park. Yoki at second. Here is Geronimo Pena. His job is surely to get Yoki over to third base here. Should be. Now, Pena saw his batting average only 208. The Cardinals have not been getting any production out of second base this year, whether it be Pena or Luis Alisea. Both of them have really struggled. There's the butt. Third base side of beauty. Nobody goes to get it. Jackson then, seeing that the third baseman Batiste was not coming in, tried to reverse his field and he slipped and fell. Well, the one thing you have to do if you're the third baseman, you have to make sure you get one out someplace. If you're not completely sure that the pitcher is going to be able to field the ball, you have to charge it and take it. Let's see how quickly he takes back, goes back to third. Well, he takes two steps in. Now he stops and reverses his field. But you can see Jackson actually was off to the first base side. So he really didn't have any chance to get the ball. Baptiste has to come and get that ball. You have to make sure of one. Now here is Jeffries. Switch hitter batting right-handed. 330 average. High in the end of right field. Eisenreich. Took off on him. Easily coming in to score is Gilkey. Pena back to first. Turned into a nice play by Eisenreich as the Cardinals take a 1 0 lead. Well, Eisenreich started drifting on the ball and the ball continued to travel, so he ended up having to make a tough catch. 
Ball's out toward the end of the bat. And you can see that he really just did, I think he needed to get back a little quicker, but he made a good play on the ball anyway. Here now is Todd Zeal, the key man for this Cardinal club. He's the cleanup hitter, but only a 235 batting average for Zeal. He really became the RBI man they had hoped last year. Dalton drops it, but the runner holds it first. Uh, Zeal finished up last year with 103 runs batted in, 277 average. So he's nowhere close to that kind of production so far this year. have so many things that have gone wrong for them so far you wonder exactly how they've been able to stay close in that central division which is a very high for a ball two at all the count I mean the Cardinals are not scoring many runs just a little over four runs per game and their earned run average is almost five runs per game as a staff and yet they have a record of better than 500 and they can pull it within two games of first place for the win here tonight Two and one, that one's a strike. Mark Whitten is on deck. One out, one on, one in for the Cardinals here in the first inning. Neal has never hit well against Jackson, as you can see. A lot of guys have not hit well against Jackson. Good pitch, ball moving away from Zeal, and that's what left-handers do well anyway. Their fastball tails away, and now you see that's the changeup, and it is going away from Zeal, and Zeal way out in front. Good pitch by Jackson. Two and two now. Frank on the back at first with Pena. Cruck was in the dirt and wide, and Cruck stretched out and played the short hop to get the double play. Six to four to three. Good play by Stocker to get the ball to Morandini in good shape, but he doesn't make a good throw to first. And watch, the throw is chest high where you want it. Perfect. Morandini's throw is just off to the outfield side, but good scoop there by Cruck, and the Phillies get out of trouble. Cardinals have the lead. And uh, now Jim Fregosi's uh, ball club will be coming to bat here against Bob Tewksbury. Fregosi's club, they've hit pretty well, nearly five runs per game among the top five in the National League in that category. Middle of the league for team batting average. And that's even though they've had some injury problems. Len Dykstra leads it off. And uh, he's averaging nearly a run per game. Mickey Morandini, second base. John Crook. When he's played, he's hit, hitting 311. Darren Dalton, the catcher, 44 RBIs. Another big season in the offing. Jim Eisenreich hitting 312. Milt Thompson in left field hitting 283. Kim Batiste at third base. Kevin Stocker, the rookie who just electrified the city here in the second half of last year. And then Danny Jackson is the pitcher hitting ninth. And there's Bob Tewksbury, who was the first seven-game winner in the Major Leagues this year. He's cooled off considerably of late. Look at that earned run average, very high. He is eight and four. He throws a wide variety of pitches, and so we asked him to demonstrate his pitches for us. This is uh, my sinker or two-seam fastball. This is my four-seam fastball or cut fastball that I'll use away from the right-handers and into the left-handers. My changeup is the uh, circle change. My curveball is a four-seam curveball that comes out of my hand this way. This is the uh, slider, and this is the snail ball. I don't throw that, though. <laughs> and that snail ball is probably the toughest to hit of all. <laughs> I'm sorry he doesn't throw it, you know what? Yeah. Bob Tewksbury. And he, of course, relies on his control. He's not the guy who can overpower anybody. Well, let's take a look at the defense. And because we will not see him much longer, Ozzie Smith has had 13 gold gloves presented to him. And he makes plays all over the field. We'll take a look at one. This is kind of routine for Ozzie. It's a great play for most shortstops. But for Ozzie Smith, we've seen him do that for about the last 15 years. 
although he's only won 13 gold gloves, he has always been a good defensive shortstop. And that was in a game this year, back in May, against the New York Mets. He is struggling now. Here's Dykstra. Right center field. Jordan. And there is one away, just like that. Dykstra retired. That's interesting, John. Dykstra normally takes some pitches at the beginning of the ball game, but he knows taking a lot of pitches against Tewksbury is futile, so he looks it for the first fastball, he gets it, and he tries to hammer it, but he didn't get enough of it. And brings up Mickey Morandini. Morandini hitting 276, no homers, nine runs battered in. Shows Buck takes a called strike. Jerry Crawford, the home plate umpire tonight. One to nothing, the Cardinals leading as we play the last of the first. Dugout. John, oh, two. John, I was looking into today's paper where they list all the averages at the end of the week. And I went through and I looked for some players that did not have home runs. There are only three in the National League. There are only two now. Delano DeShields, Chucky Carr, and Mickey Morney. One the of the regular had enough at bats yeah, to qualify for, for, for my benefit. And I found that interesting because, I, you know, so many home runs have been hit this year. That only three of the almost regulars without the home run. We'll call the Professor Morgan batting leaders from here on. <laughs> Unassisted put out there for Jeffries at first base. Two men down. Take a look at this fastball on the inside part of the plate, right on the corner, maybe a little off, and they jams Morandini, breaks his bat. And that's what Tewksbury does. He'll throw you a lot of change-ups away, and then his fastball looks much quicker than it really is when he comes inside. Good pitch there. Well, now here's John Crux. And, of course, John Crux's life has changed dramatically since last we saw him in October. He's first ball swinging as well. And Pena throws him out. So the Phillies in the first, we hardly saw him. one nothing Cardinals. Six pitches for Tewksbury. Where else but Joseph Pontiac Isuzu can you get the Joseph advantage? You get free pinstriping, free undercoating, free door edge guards, free oil change, a free tank of gas, and $3,000 minimum of... Between you and me, this is my best value at 22 grand. The price of today's automobile is higher than ever before. I can get you into a 48-month payment plan, no problem. The right. terms of financing are longer than ever before. Let's go into my office. That's why regular oil and lubrication maintenance every 90 days at Grease Monkey is more important than ever before. 21.5. What do you say? Grease Monkey, extending the life of your car. We could go 60 months on the payments. Stanley Cup playoffs are now available on video cassette. This official NHL production is filled with non-stop action from the opening face-off to the victory skate with hockey's ultimate prize. Only $19.94 plus $4 shipping. Call 1-800-225-5222 to order the Stanley Cup Collector's Edition. 1-800-225-5222. Order yours today. Department stores may never be the same now that kids are discovering the Rookie League collection. It's major with kids' clothes, built to stand up to the way kids play. The Rookie League collection, now playing at a department store near you. Sunday Night Baseball from Philadelphia. The Cardinals won, the Phillies nothing. This is John Miller along with Joe Morgan. Your Sunday Night Telecasters. In clear weather and in foul. In rainstorms, with thunder all around. We are there to bring you Sunday Night Baseball. You need some baseball Sunday night? We are there. In snowstorms, in sleet. There you will find us. 
was hit uh, deep and fouled by Mark Whitten. He's got a lot of power. Whitten hit 25 home runs uh, last year, and he hit uh, 20 of them in one game. <laughs> well, seems like. Yeah, I'm sure it felt like it for those who were being uh, hit because he hit four homers and had 12 RBIs in one game. He got tied up on that one. It looked like a good slider up and in on, Gil on Whitten. It was right under the hands. I think you'll see a lot of that tonight when Jackson gets his rhythm. He will throw the slider that starts on the inside part of the plate and breaks down and off on the right-handed hitters. September the 7th at Cincinnati in a doubleheader in one game he, in the second game of the doubleheader he had four homers and 12 RBIs. Mark Whitten. 266 so far this year with four homers and 139 RBIs and none of them as a right handed hitter. Jordan and McGriff will follow. Number one for Jackson. Well, that pitch was the strikeout pitch, but the real reason he struck with not was because he threw so many pitches inside, got him looking inside. Now he goes away with the changeup, and that pitch is so far off the plate, no way Whitten can hit it. But the two pitches before are what set up that strikeout: a slider in and a fastball off the plate inside. Danny Jackson. Now here is Brian Jordan hitting only 233. Outfielder. Kind of like he broke his bat in that one. Right to Dykstra. Two men gone. And that'll bring up Terry McGriff. Well, we're seeing a lot of first ball, fastball hitting tonight. And, I, and that's an interesting point because a lot of hitting instructors believe, or pitching coaches believe, that there are a lot of good fastball hitters on the first pitch. I don't agree with that. I think that a hitter is better after he's seen one fastball. The time. There's a first ball hitters, and then there's a, I remember Tom Trebleborn once called it that hurry up and make an outswing. <laughs> I mean, it's one thing if the guy is, yeah, is, has, is an a, idea. has a reputation for grooving that first one right where you like it. I'm waiting to see if it's right where you like it. I remember Scott McGregor. He was, was kind of a left-handed version of Tewksbury. He had great control, not a real hard thrower. He said he would throw the first pitch right down the middle, so he'd always start out ahead. And if a guy was sitting on it, well, he'd throw him a, a straight change or something. Kind of get him off stride. Well, there's the old saying, the best pitch in baseball is strike one. And that still prevails in the 1900s to today. Strike one as long as there's been no balls thrown yet. <laughs> yes. And that is ball four. McGriff, with two down, gets aboard here. Well, one final game for the Stanley Cup. After trailing three games to one, the Vancouver Canucks have rebounded. And the series now coming to an historic finale Tuesday night at 8 Eastern. The Rangers have one last chance to win their first cup in more than half a century. They get 1940 off their backs. The ESPN's coverage begins with a preview at 7.30 Eastern, then 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. Vancouver and the Rangers for Lloyd Stanley's Cup. Tuesday right here on ESPN. Here is Ozzie Smith taking ball one. See some uh, ferocious, tenacious hockey in that series so far. Got a lot of excitement in the uh, the whole Stanley Cup uh, playoff series. Rangers in the series against the New Jersey, now with Vancouver. We'll see Tuesday night. Ozzie Smith. John Ozzie's struggling, and when you're up in age and you struggle, people have a tendency to question whether you have anything left or not. And I'm sure he's gotten off the slow starts before and rebounded, but once you get over 35, people start to wonder if he can bounce back. There are a lot of whispers about Ozzie Smith. He wax that one. Dykstra. Coming up with Eisenreich and Thompson behind him, 1-0 St. Louis.
of Seattle. Average rainfall, 39 inches. Phoenix, average high, 103 degrees. Minneapolis, average low, 7. Every year, Anderson windows and patio doors stand up to the harshest sun, the coldest wind, the hardest rain. So much for the law of averages. Maggie started her delivery business on just two wheels. Then she got an 800 number from AT&T for just $5 a month. And Maggie's business really started to grow. AT&T 800 service is so easy. No startup costs, no new equipment. Order by July 31st and get 10% off all your 800 calls for a year. Just call 1-800-558-4ATT. And watch your business take off for just $5 a month. It works for Maggie. Let AT&T work for you. Trade it. You call Domino's. But look, call for a large two-topping crunchy thin crust pizza now and get a medium one-topping pizza free. At Domino's! Okay, let's try this Goodyear deal in Latin. Uh, tribus emptus quartum gratuitum, which means this week buy three Goodyear regatta all-season radials at the regular price, get the fourth one free. So, tribus emptus, get one free, ibus. Every day. the most complete source for auto parts. And all Napa parts are backed by a nationwide warranty program. No wonder more Americans trust Napa to keep their vehicles running. We keep America running. We keep America running. Sunday night baseball from Philadelphia. Cardinals won, the Phillies nothing. We go to the last of the second. This is a, a beginning of close coverage of the Phillies. John, take a look at Terry McGriff at first base in the middle of your screen now. It's two outs. He should be running full speed. He is not running. You know, a lot of things have been blamed. The Cardinals have blamed their uh, lack of success this year on hitting. But they've also had a lot of poor base running mistakes. They've made a lot of mistakes on the bases so far this season as well. And talking to the coaches, that's one of the things that's really bothered. Well, McGriff didn't know how many, how many outs. He didn't know how many outs there were. There is Darren Dalton. Two down, you crack of the bat, you run as hard as you can. Exactly. If, if Dykes had dropped the ball, you should be able to almost score. Here's Dalton. And uh, he is, as you mentioned, at the head of the telecast, become the, the real leader of this club. And he's a tough guy. He plays every day. They talked about reducing his workload this year. Hasn't happened. Still in there every day. Dalton with 13 homers, 44 runs batted in. He drove in 105 runs last year, 109 the year before. Hustling up the line and made it close. That was another good pitch by Tewksbury. The breaking ball down and away at fooled Dalton. He thought it was a regular speed breaking ball, but it was a little slower one. He got out in front, hit it off the end of the bat. One down here is Jim Eisenreich. Eisenreich. Hitting 312, one home run, 18 driven in. And uh, Jim Fragosi's favorite players. The slider misses down and in. He says that Eisenreich is a guy who just doesn't make mistakes out there. Always cocked into the game situation. Always hustles everything out. And the Fergosi says, hey, don't be fooled by our record. This club still hustles everything. Which for him was the trademark of last year's club. Not that they had a bunch of characters in the team, but that they just played hard every single day. Well, the media made them a bunch of characters. You know, they said they were comparing them to truck driver. But for me, the thing that characterized the Phillies was their hard play. They were a hard-nosed team. They hustled all the time. And they weren't afraid of knocking people over at second base. They played the game the way it was supposed to be played. That's a strike. Now, this is always a, a major story. Anytime Tewksbury has three balls on a count, because he hardly ever walks anybody. He walked 20 all of last year. And he gives up the hit this time. First hit for the Phillies. Eisenreich has it. 
Well, that's one of the things that Tewksbury does. He will give up a base hit before he walks someone. And he gave up more hits than anyone in the league last year. But that's because on three and one pitches, he will throw strikes. Three and one, you see the target right in the middle of the plate. Wasn't a bad pitch. The ball sunk away from Eisenreich, but he did a good job of hitting it to center field. If he'd have tried to pull that ball, he probably would have gotten a ground ball to second base. Now, Mel Thompson, one of the uh, Phillies role players. Thompson, 283, three homers, 21 battered in. Right over the middle, into center field. Base hit. Eisenreich's going to try for third. Jordan Slow. He's in there. Well, we talked about base running. There's an example of good base running there by Eisenreich. He made up his mind about 10 feet from second base that he was going to go. He turned the bag and kept going. Jordan, with a good throw, had a shot at him. That's a slider that's bounded right back through the middle. Now, Jordan is really kind of trotting in. He's not charging that ball as quickly as he should. Now, watch. Eisenreich makes up his mind. He's going to force the action. Right there, a good throw probably would have made it a very close play, but not a good throw from Jordan in center field. Now, this is base can. This is Eisenreich coming in to our eyes right there in second base. See him catching the location of uh, Jordan as he fielded the ball in center as he got near the back. Here's Batiste. Curveball in there. Call strike one. You know, one of the big plays in that first inning when the Cardinals scored a run was Batiste failing to come in to field that bunt by Pena. Now Batiste, a chance to atone for that. He's hitting 221. Watched him in batting practice. He was taking everything to right field. Did it hit him? No, it hit the bat. And his first two approaches to the pitches looked like he was trying to go the other way. And Tewksbury threw that pitch way inside. Now watch him see so starts in. And it's a foul ball, according to Jerry Crawford. There you can see it. Off the bat and off the catcher. When Tewksbury doesn't throw a strike, he gets a strike. Now that is control. Oh, and to the count. What is it first and third? One out. Hart goes ahead by one. One ball and two strikes. Eisenreich hit a single to center with one out. He's at third base. Milt Thompson bounced a single to center. He's at first being held to the bag by Greg Jeffries, who's also talking his ear off over there. One of these guys don't know how many outs there are, Joe. feels that he's a lot more effective a lot of times against left-handed hitters in these situations because of the changeup. But the changeup is lost on right-handers. This pitch gets a lot of the plate. You could see that McGriff was set up way off the plate outside. That pitch got a lot of the plate, and Batiste was able to get enough of it to drive in the run. So not a good pitch there from Tewksbury when you were hitting the count 0-2. Now here's the switch hitting Kevin Stocker, 237 average. Back to the disabled list here fairly uh, recently. He wasn't even in the big leagues at this time last year. He came up to the club around the All Star break, solidified their infield defense, which is all they wanted him to do. But he did more than that. He hit 324 in the second half of the year. And this club got the uh, just what they needed when Stocker came up. There's a phrase you do not hear much anymore punch and Judy hitter. means a guy hits a lot of singles and slaps the ball the other way. You don't have those types of hitters much anymore because most people are swinging harder with a thinner handle bat. But Stocker kind of reminds me of, of people who the term was coined for, and that's guys who hold the bat tight to their bodies and just kind of slap the ball around and get base hits. Well, he's got 20 singles, two doubles. Now, he, didn't, he wasn't on your list of no home runs. Well, he, he's been off. He's been on disabled. He doesn't have nothing bad. <laughs> on the score here last of the second no Thompson first base now Thompson's got pretty good speed he can steal a base if you don't keep a close eye the outside corner 
One ball, one strike to Stucker. And the funny thing about that list, John, Morin Dini led the Phillies in home runs in spring training. He hit a lot of home runs in spring training, and he doesn't have one. Morin Dini. Morin Dini hit a grand slam in a big ball game with the Phillies last year that won it in the bottom of the ninth inning. I asked him this winter. I was on a vacation with him on a uh, cruise ship. And I said, well, how many grand slams does that give you now for your career? He said, well, that's good. Base hit for Stocker. Showing off some of that 300 hitter form from last year. Thompson stops at second. Danny Jackson comes up with a chance to help himself. And this is what I'm talking about. Watch you just slap at the ball. See the ball's out there, just slaps it to left field. And you know, when you call a hitter a punch and judy hitter, that's not a derogatory statement. It's just a type of hitter that he is. And he just punches it to left field for a base hit. You can see it's very wet there in the outfield, ball bouncing, throwing water. Well, tonight, another phrase they used to use, which was kind of appropriate, looking at that ball bouncing through the water out there, used to call those type hitters spray hitters. Yeah, that was water spray, You're right? <laughs> two on, two out. Here is Danny Jackson. Now, Jackson is not helpless up there. Jackson has a 219 batting average. Got more hits than any other Phillies pitcher. Seven for 32. He even has a double, and he has two runs battered in. You know, I mentioned several times in our telecast that you know a hitter, a, a pitcher who is a good hitter, will keep his average over 200, and that's good. That's like a hitter, a everyday player, hitting 300. So Jackson shows you that he's a good hitter. He has a 219 average. Tewsbury showed him uh, some respect there. He didn't throw that first ball, fastball. Ball and won the count. Jackson, by the way, he sort of had some newfound prowess at the plate this year. His lifetime average before this year, 113. And another breaking ball. Yeah, he reverts back to it when he sees the breaking ball. Hey, Joe, this guy looks like a punch and Judy hitter to me. <laughs> Maybe not even a, just a Judy. Oh, and to the count to. Danny Jackson. Two on, two out, two strikes. One to one the score. Fastball off the outside. One ball, two strikes now. Jackson has gotten himself into the best shape of his career. Another thing Dalton was mentioning about him. This is a guy who's on a mission this year, Danny Jackson. In the dirt, he fouled it. Not a very good eye, but he made contact. To say if Tewksbury throws him anything but a curveball here, I can see why he struggled his last few outings. He had him set up perfectly for this breaking ball down and away. He gets it down and away, and Jackson just barely gets a piece of it and stays alive. I don't think it should count as a foul ball if the guy swings at a pitch like that. <laughs> There's no Thompson at second base. Kevin Stocker at first, both ready to go at the crack of the bat, which so far hasn't seemed too likely. Well, Broken background to the short. Ozzy throws him out. He threw him the fastball, but right in the hands. And at the cost of Jackson's back. One run for the Phillies, though. Tewksbury will be coming up, then Gilkey and Pena. It is one to one after two. Since I came to the United States, I speak English better. But Russian is still my language. This is my home. Brighton Beach. Russian language is like music. I speak Russian everywhere. Everything is Russian. Russian better. Books Russian. Russian nightclub. The weather is Russian. Now even my phone company, Russian. With MCI's friends around the world, you can have your international operator service in your language automatically. They even call me to make sure I'm getting their best savings. It makes everything uh, prost, simple. It shows respect. Join friends around the world anytime. The easiest way to call, the easiest way to save. Please be seated. The performance is about to begin. The 32 valve, 280 horsepower Lincoln Mark 8. It's like Beethoven with an attitude. Drive everything else first. Panasonic presents a unique and highly evolved smooth operator. The smooth operator tube with float control is the only razor to unite the comfort of twin independent floating heads with the closeness of a warm, wet shave. 
try this with any plugged-in razor. The Smooth Operator Wet Dry Razors from Panasonic. Smoother than you ever thought you'd be. Tough day, huh, kiddo? We're doing fractions in mass. And Gracie Gibson kissed me on the playground in front of everybody. Yuck. Sounds like you need a bedtime story. Come on. With car chases? Cool. When your day needs a little turnaround, Blockbuster has 9,000 ways to make it a Blockbuster night. How about another story? Yeah, I got one. With boys kissing girls. <laughs> One to one after two innings. We asked Darren Dalton, the Phillies catcher, what has been the key to Danny Jackson's uh, improvement this season. He is seven and one after all. With the addition of him picking up a changeup, you know, last year he threw it a little bit. This year he's mastered it, and that's uh, that's a big, big gun in his repertoire now. You know, he's mainly been hard fastball slider for the last eight years or whatever, and uh, for him to pick that changeup up, uh, it's a very deceiving pitch for him, and uh, I, I think that's going to turn his game around. That's going to allow him to pitch longer. And John, the key to that is what he said about for the last eight years. You get a pattern with a pitcher from a hitter standpoint, and that's what you start to look for, fastball slider. Here's Tewksbury. Takes the ball outside. By the way, the ball game that we were all watching while we were in the rain delay here, Kansas City at Texas. Here's the 1-0 delivery for a strike. One and one to Tewksbury. That game now at the end of six innings, Kansas City two, Texas nothing. Texas has only one hit in six innings against David Cohn. A 92 mile an hour fastball, strike two to Tewksbury. On our jugs gun. Gotta keep track of how hard these pitches are throwing. Looks like Jackson when he wants to throw pretty hard. Take a look here. Yeah, they changed up on him for strike three. He threw him a couple of hard pitches, and this is actually a slider that breaks down and in. And that's the pitch I think he'll be very effective with against a lot of right-handed hitters tonight. Now Bernard Gilkey led off the game with a double to score a run. And that is ball one. 85 miles an hour that pitch. Well, he's throwing two different fastballs, the straight fastball and the riding fastball is one is around 90, and the sinker is around 85. I'd say that was the riding fastball there, Joe. On the inside part of the plate. One ball, one strike. Indians on deck. Yoki has always been a strong hitter against Jackson, as you can see. Came in with the same one again. A little harder still, but it missed. Two and one. The Reds were beaten today at home by the Colorado Rockies. First place team in the central. Popped him up. Same fastball on the inside part of the plate. This is Batiste in foul ground. Out number two. Now coming up Wednesday on ESPN. Wednesday night baseball. Those Colorado Rockies will face the Atlanta Braves. They have never beaten the Braves. The big cat, Andres Galarraga, Fred McGriff. It'll be Greg Harrison about for the Rockies and John Smoltz. That'll be 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific. Followed by Kevin Mitchell, the Cincinnati Reds, and uh, their new leadoff man, Deion Sanders. Mike Piazza and the Dodgers following uh, the Braves and the Rockies. A doubleheader Wednesday on ESPN. Here is Geronimo Pena. Got a bunt single this first time. And he is one for one. Pena was struggling so terribly as a right-handed hitter that he gave up switch hitting this spring. And, uh, and then decided, what am I doing? This is not working out. And by the time the season started, he was back to switch hitting again. They always have felt that this guy has the talent that he could become a star, but it just never happened for him. Well, two years ago, he got off to a great start. And it looked like he was going to live up to all their expectations, but he got injured and then he was never the same. And Alisea took over. Luis Alisea played second for quite a while. They have really not settled on Pena or Alisea. They seem to flip flop them, or whoever seems to be swinging the bat best at that time seems to play. He waxed this one into left field for a base hit. That's 
Bill Thompson who picks it up. So Pena is two for two. It keeps the inning going for Greg Jeffries. And Ronimo Pena, 266 lifetime average. And his best big league season was just really a half a year in 1992, and he hit 305. And even then, when he was doing well, he got hurt. Jeffries had a sacrifice fly his first time. Ball hard to right field. Now, is he out of the box? Jerry Crawford says no. He says foul ball. Okay. Kind of looked down to Riker at third, but no reaction from there, so it will be a foul ball. We'll take a look. Jeffries bunning. Oh. Well, it's, it's looked like his back foot was still in the batter's box, meaning his right foot. Watch his right foot. Close. The line is supposed to go all the way across. That's a high fly ball to left, but in comes Milt Thompson. That's the inning. One hit, one left. Top of the order coming with the Phillies. It'll be Dykstra, Morandini, and John Crock. Jeffrey's a little unhappy. It all runs together. Time for our jobs, ourselves, our families. Is there something that connects us? Something that transcends time and distance? Well, there's Mobile Link. Only cellular service that has Mobile Link makes it easy to stay connected almost everywhere, all the time. Or just whenever. Make sure your local cellular service has Mobile Link. Call 800 995 4000. Play. John McEnroe won 115 titles with Dunlop Rackets. Achoo! Bless you. How will our new revelation affect his performance? Quiet, please. The revelation's unique construction flexes to help you place the ball more accurately. Offering every player. Ball was good. Game set match, McEnroe. Outstanding control. Hey, you know my crew spends hundreds of hours building those 5,000 horsepower motors. I can explode one in five seconds. And when that happens, nobody eats. That's why my guys won't run anything but Fram fillers. You know, Fram gets the nasty stuff out of the oil, so I can go to the other end with my candles lit. And you know, that's in about five seconds, nearly 300 miles an hour. You can look at these guys and see they eat pretty near every day. There are a lot of ways you can take an inexpensive, value-packed summer getaway. Whether this or this. There's always this. But then, you can do this. This is an all-time favorite. Of course, so is this. It's your choice. This, or America's best vacation value, Las Vegas. An amazing place at an amazing price. John Miller with Joe Morgan. Sunday Night Baseball from Philadelphia. I just want to show you that the batter's box actually goes like this all the way across from both sides. So even though it's not there, that line, imaginary line, goes across. And he was in the air, so they wouldn't call him out of the batter's box. If your foot lands and you hit the ball, then you're out of the batter's box. Len Dykstra, the hitter, he's going after that first pitch. Uh, well, he did the first time. This time he almost did. And there's a soft one in there for a strike. One ball and one strike. Dini on deck, John Cruck do up third in the end. We'll be trying to give you some of the Jacks guns uh, readings on Tewsbury as we go through this inning. That's a strike, 85 miles an hour on that one. One ball and two straight. Even when he throws hard, it doesn't look hard, does it? Well, it doesn't have to be hard as long as there's some movement there. And that ball did have a little tail on it. It moved away from Dykstra. the base hit. Now let's go to Gary Miller for an update on the Kansas City, Texas game. John MCI proof positive takes us to the ballpark in Arlington where David Cohn is pitching a gym. 
Strikes out Dean Palmer, strikes out Esteban Beltre. He's cut down in the strikeouts this year. He's only got three in this game, but he's third in the league in ERA. Had those three straight shutouts in May, and right now he's winning 2-0 in the seventh. Back to the vet. David Cohn looking to become the first 10-game winner in the American League. Earlier today, Greg Maddox became the National League's first 10-game man. The buck by Morandini. McGriff! Almost waited too long there. Dykstra has moved over to second. Well, McGriff was taking a look at Dykstra at second base, and you just can't do that because this was not a straight sacrifice. Watch, Born, watch him, he's on the move. See, this is not a straight sacrifice, so he's moving. And now McGriff catches the ball, looks at Dykstra, now takes two extra hops, and close play at first base. Now John Cruck comes up. Cruck, of course, who had the, the cancer that was discovered in the spring, he underwent the radiation uh, treatments for that which is just such a, a, a terrible, grueling ordeal. And now that he's back, the problem for Cruck is he's not in baseball shape. It's still spring training for him. And so what Jim Fregosi has done is that Cruck will play one day, and then the next day, he does exercises. He'll ride the stationary bike to do the kind of exercise you do early in spring training. Well, that shows you the difference that a year makes. Last year, you know, people laughed about him not being in shape. They say he's never been in shape. But I tell you what, he can hit. And whether he is in great shape or not, he can still swing the bat. He grounded a second his first time tonight. Base hit here can mean a run. Dykstra at second. He sinks a little bit low. And even Krupp made light of the fact last year that he's never been in shape and he doesn't look like a hitter. Two and one the count. But he does get the job done with the bat in his hand. Right over the outside, two and two now. John Crook. Crook came up with a book this year that uh, Paul Hagen, baseball writer here in Philadelphia, wrote with him called I Ain't an Athlete Lady, I'm a Ball Player. <laughs> takes third with two down and Dalton coming up. Let's take a look at Darren Dalton's swing on the left 1990. Look his hips are already open a little bit so he goes straight out which caused him to pull off a little quicker than you'd like. See he drags the bat through the zone a little bit there. Contrast that on the right. Perfect hip position. Perfect shoulder position. Dives in and then attacks the ball. This is a beautiful swing. A lot quicker. More act. More bat speed. Look at the hips. Everything's still closed. Better bat speed and better results. You can see he's looking up into the upper deck. Yeah. He knows how to find it. His last three years, that's when Dalton has become one of the great run producers in the National League. He takes high for ball one. That 1990 video we saw, that year was his first good year, and he drove in 57 runs with 12 homers. Now he's a he's a hundred RBI man. Time. Pena out, Whitten in. Whitten takes care of it. So the Phillies unable to get Dykstra home. We head to the fourth inning. Zeal, Whitten, and Jordan coming up. It's tied at one. Fasten your seatbelts. Because yeah! 94 Fleer Ultra Baseball has more gold, more photos, and more incredible inserts. Featuring superstars and hot rookies. There's one insert card in every pack. Fleer Ultra, better than ever. You know, it just sort of happened. One day I spotted some gray, and then I saw a wrinkle or two, and, and I started thinking, I don't know, maybe I was losing it. Maybe the best years were behind me. Then one day it dawned on me. I was beginning to look like my dad. I can live with that. Can't. Clothes for the man comfortable in his own skin. Maggie started her delivery business on just two wheels. Then she got an 800 number from AT&T for just $5 a month. And Maggie's business really started to grow. AT&T 800 service is so easy. No startup costs, no new equipment. 
Order by July 31st and get 10% off all your 800 calls for a year. Just call 1-800-558-4ATT. And watch your business take off for just $5 a month. It works for Maggie. Let AT&T work for you. This summer, beat the heat. Wally has. Because his house is cooled by Carrier, the world's most energy-efficient air conditioner. It keeps him cool and saves you money. In fact, Carrier is so energy efficient, it can save you up to 60% on your cooling bills. So stay cool, save money. Call Carrier. We're the inside guys. Hey, who's Poodle? Do you have a problem with food sticking to your barbecue? Just spray all natural Pam on a cold grill, and your problem will go away. Pam makes barbecuing less sticky. Cardinals won, Phillies won on uh, Sunday Night Baseball, and uh, we've got uh, the Philly fanatic trying to bust into show business there. Take a look at Dalton's last swing. Watch his right foot, his front foot. See, he rolls over on his ankle, and that's why he hops to try to get pressure off of it. He limped a little bit down to first base, but that'll happen through the course of the year. You'll roll over on your ankle. It really doesn't hurt, except for that split second. You'll be all right after that. It hurts me just uh, watching the tape of it. Here's Tom Zeal. Fastball for a strike from Danny Jackson, 91 miles an hour. What hurt him more than the ankle was to miss that high fastball from Tewksbury and popping it up instead of hitting it out of the ballpark. On the score, fourth inning. Fastball pops the glove of Dalton. One and one, the count. I asked Dalton before the game how he was. If everything was all right. He says, uh, he says, hey, if there was ever a day where everything was all right, that would mean I must have retired years ago. Most catchers get a lot of bangs and bruises, and probably unlike unlike most catchers. He's got him even worse because he plays every day, like and your old buddy Johnny. Right, Bruce. that was going to say, it's interesting you said that they were going to try to give him some more time. Well, that's what Sparky used to say about Johnny Bench, I'm going to give him more time off this year, but you cannot help but write their names in the lineup when they're that good. Well, yeah. Nice pick up by Stockton. Back to his feet. Throws him out. Well, Stocker, this is, remember the rain here, and it's a little wet out there, so the ball skips a little quicker on this aceturf. Zeal goes down and gets this ball, and that skids right there. Stocker has to really kind of extend to get it. Comes up very quickly and makes an accurate throw to first base. Gets Zeal very easily after he makes the catch. Mark Witten chases that low slider. On one. Witten struck out his first time. One to one, fourth inning. One out, nobody on. So far in this ball game, John, he seems to be ahead of the breaking ball and behind the fastball. That's a tough position to be in. That fastball on the inside misses. One ball, two strikes. But you can see his movement was late even on that. But he's early on the breaking ball, so he's got to find a medium there someplace. Yeah. He struck him out again. Two down here. Let's go to Gary Miller for the Rangers-Royals update. Gary? John in the seventh, two on for the Royals against Hector Fajardo and Greg Gagne clubbed one deep in the ballpark at Arlington. Jose Lina, Vince Coleman will score easily. Gagne's going to try and do something he hasn't done all year. He got a triple. Scored in a sack fly, it's 5-0. All right, Gary, thanks very much. It's the latest from the ballpark at Arlington, and now it's truly starting to look like David Cohn get that tenth victory here Brian Jordan hitters strike one Jordan flagged the center his first time Jordan, the former football player with the Atlanta Falcons and this time last year he was in the minor leagues Croc knocks it down Jackson is over to cover but there's no play Croc, great effort on that one things happen there. The strength of Jordan is evident by the fact he was jammed, but he still got enough of it to hit a soft line drive towards right field. Now watch. Balls in on him. He just muscles it toward right field. Cruck with the dive, and he 
comes out as he hits the ground. Watch, he makes the catch right there, but when he hits the ground, the ball pops out. Good effort there by Brook. There's Terry McGriff, who walked his first time. Two down, runner at first. And Jordan, who's got great speed, goes back to the bag. Jordan, last year, called back for the minor leagues on June 25th. And he hit 337 from that point on. Here he is is struggling again this year. Short off throw to first by Jackson. You know, we, we mentioned earlier about the Phillies five man rotation from last year and how Jackson is the only one of the five who's currently pitching. And they've had so many injury problems. And it has decimated the rotation, but there's one other element besides the injuries that is played against. That's low for a ball. They traded uh, Terry Mulholland. The spring to the Yankees, and uh, there are those in the Phillies clubhouse who feel that Mulholland, who is one of those hard-nosed competitors like Jackson is now, as Dalton is, that if Mulholland was still here, maybe some of the other guys wouldn't have been uh, injured so quickly. Well, the Mulholland deal was about money, John. They didn't feel they could sign him to a long-term deal, and rather than lose him after this year to free agency, they made a trade. So. Again, that you know, money comes in into play here rather than just a matter of talent. Kurt Schilling, who was uh, so impressive in the postseason last year, pitched a shutout against the Blue Jays in Game Five of the World Series. Now, he's had two different surgeries this year. One is too low. Two and one, the count to McGriff. Also. Schilling had the elbow and knee operations. Tommy Green, who won 16 games last year, he's had some shoulder surgery. He might be lost for the year. Ben Rivera, who won 13 last year, just gone out on rehab assignment. There's two of the guys who've been filling in. Meanwhile, Munoz, number 35, and David West. And uh, both have pitched pretty well here lately. West, in particular, has been sensational. He's leaving the bullpen and uh, moving into that starting rotation. Schilling, Schilling was 0-7 when he went on the dis disabled list. Now see, these are the new starters. West, Munoz, Sean Bosky, Mike Williams. Chase from his knees. Got him at second base. Morandini covering. Jordan is retired. Beautiful play by Batiste. Eisenreich, Thompson, and Batiste coming up. One to one after three and a half from Philadelphia. Where else but Joseph Pontiac Isuzu can you get the Joseph advantage? You get free pinstriping, free undercoating, free door edge guards, free oil change, a free tank of gas, and $3,000 minimum off any Isuzu Trooper or $3,200 minimum off any Pontiac Bonneville. No other dealer gives you all this plus the best price and selection. Joseph Pontiac Isuzu on Delcy Drive in Vineland. Between you and me, this is my best value at 22 grand. The price of today's automobile is higher than ever before. I can get you into a 48-month payment plan, no problem. The but terms of financing are longer than ever before. Let's go into my office. That's why regular oil and lubrication maintenance every 90 days at Grease Monkey is more important than ever before. 21.5. What do you say? Grease Monkey, extending the life of your car. We could go 60 months on the payments. Plays in college basketball ever. And this incredible video is yours free when you subscribe to College Sports, the hot new magazine devoted exclusively to college sports. The inside story, top recruits, stats, and more. You've never seen anything like College Sports Magazine. Order now to receive 12 issues for just $19.95 and get the video free. If not satisfied, just ask for a refund, but keep the video. Call now, 1-800-554-9000. To understand the World Cup, you have to understand the stature of the men who are going to walk on that field. They're like gods. Yeah, they're like gods. Rock stars. But they're even bigger than that. But I can't think of anything bigger than gods rock stars! Cardinals one, Phillies one. We go to the last of the fourth here at the Vet. Bob Tewksbury on the hill for St. Louis. Facing Danny Jackson tonight. Pretty good matchup. We were talking about the Phillies and the problems they've had with their rotation. Jackson is 
the only one of the big five from last year that went to the World Series still pitching for the Phillies. There was the rotation last year. Schilling, Jackson, Rivera, Green, Mulholland. Only one of them. Green went on the disabled list, and he was just there for the minimum 15 days. What a difference a year makes. Schilling, 0-7, then on the DL. Rivera's been on for 37 days already. Green, 33, and, of course, Mulholland. Never did pitch for the Phillies this year. He was traded during the spring. Here is Eisenreich. And the curveball in there for a call strike. Eisenreich single to center. And later scored the Phillies run in a 1-1 ball game. He's hitting 316 for the year. with a double. Now, Tewksbury has struggled in five of his last six outings he's lost. Well, part of the problem is they're kind of hitting them where they ain't, so to speak, as we Willie Keeler would say. That ball was hit off the end of the bat, and it just finds the foul line down the right field line. It's a curveball, completely fools Eisenreich, but he pops it up down the right field line, and look at that, he hits just inside the line. And it's a double. So he makes a good pitch, but he doesn't have anything to show for it except the runner at second with no one out. Now, Milt Thompson. Now, Milt bounced a single to center his first time with Batiste behind him. And look what he's done with men in scoring position this year. 4.69. But, Joe, I mean, well, off the foot of Tewksbury and into left field. Tewksbury rolling around in the mound. Eisenreich scores, and Tewksbury immediately... Starts to run toward the dugout, the trainer there to meet him. It is two to one Philadelphia. Milt Thompson does it again. This one off the foot of Bob Tewksbury. Started running off the mound, Joe, after writhing in pain for a few moments. Well, I don't think Where he was could, he going? I don't think he could stand still, John. First, he started to go to back up home plate because there was a base hit with a runner at second. He's to go and back up home plate. But then he just continued to hop. It's a slider, and he lined it hard off the right outside of his... Looks like it hit him right on the right ankle. It's a low line drive. He doesn't have any chance to get out of the way. He actually tries to get his glove over, but he can't. Now, this is full speed the way it sounded. Now, as Eisenreich came in to score, he started to come to back up home plate, and then he just decided to keep strolling because I'm sure he couldn't just stand there and put pressure on it. But he says he's okay now, and he tells Joe Torre he's okay. You know, I wouldn't have blamed him if he just sat there in the mound and waited for that guy to come out and administer to him, but he jumped up and started running back. Well, he's got back up the play. Do his job. Well, he you had know what? It's more of a reaction. Good, he had a pretty good excuse, Joe. You're right, but that's more of a reaction. You've, as from the time you're a little kid, you've been taught with a runner at second, you back up, and you just do it automatically. And then the pain set in about halfway, I think. I mean, this was not one of those, well, I didn't back up home plate because my car stalled. I mean, he got hit in the ankle with a ball about 400 miles an hour. But he does seem to be okay, so that's the important thing. I hope so. That's the, uh, the ankle attached to the foot with which he pushes off the slab. Matisse, the pitch out, but uh, Thompson was not running. Well, he's still hobbling out there a little bit. And you obviously, you have to be careful if something's bothering you, you will change the way you extend through your pitching motion and you may cause injury to some other part of your body. Well, Dizzy Dean actually right. was in the All-Star game, got hit in the foot. Broken toe, right? Yeah. And uh, then he kept pitching and uh, did change his delivery to compensate and uh, hurt his arm. And that was the end of old Diz uh, pretty much as an effective pitcher for the Cardinals. Fans know that better than anybody. The dangers of pitching uh, with an injury. 2-0 the count. Dizzy Dean, a 30-game winner, the last 30-game winner in the history of the National League 60 years ago this year with the fabled Gas House Gang, 1934. Well, Tewksbury in his last 16 innings, John, has allowed 37 hits last 16 and two-thirds innings so he's been getting tagged 
recently. Shallow right center. Base hit. Thompson heading for third. Three straight hits for the Phillies here in the fourth inning. Nobody out. One thing about the Phillies, they are taking advantage of this wet field. It's probably because they're more accustomed to playing on the wet field than the Cardinals are. Well, Joe Torre is heading out to the bound now. He's got to somebody up in his bullpen. And uh, we'll see here. They're going with the umpire out. Meanwhile, for those of you just joining us from the uh, basketball game, this is ESPN Sunday Night Baseball. The National League champion Phillies here uh, at the bat. And they have just gone ahead of the Cardinals 2-1 to one on the Milt Thompson single off the ankle of that man, Bob Tewksbury. He stayed in for one batter more. And Batiste then singled into shallow right center. And you see Tewksbury limping noticeably as he walks off the hill. And Brian Eversgird will come on in relief. The uh, the play, Milt Thompson after a double by Eisenreich. And he hit it right back at Tewksbury. Right off the ankle. A new, new pitcher's coming on. All right, Chief. Hope and white. Come on. Look, Daddy loves corn pops, see? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And here he comes. The problem with a cereal that tastes like popcorn, only sweeter, is that it disappears like popcorn, only faster. You all finished? Good boy. Uh, he may want seconds. Kellogg's Corn Pops. It's hard to stop when it's pops. Since we started making tires back in 1894, a lot of cars have come and gone. Some took off in flights of fancy, while others never quite got off the ground. And through it all, we made tires for just about every car, truck, and tractor anybody dreamed up, including yours. Kelly Springfield, America's oldest tire company. complete source for auto parts. And all NAPA parts are backed by a nationwide warranty program. No wonder more Americans trust NAPA to keep their vehicles running. We keep America running. We keep America running. Another update from Arlington, eighth inning. Terry Burrow's Major League debut for the Rangers, and not a good one. Felix Jose takes him more than 400 feet over David Hulse, his third home run of the year. The Royals are up 6 to nothing, while David Cohn works on a two-hitter that would get them within three of the lead. Back to the vet. All right. Cohn still drawing ever closer to number 10 there. Here, Phillies 2, Cardinals 1. And the new pitcher, Brian Eversgird, has come on for the Cardinals in place of the injured Bob Tewksbury. Eversgird out of uh, Kaskaskia College. Played there for three years, Joe. Yeah, and I, I actually heard of that. I've heard of that college one other no, time. No, you haven't. Yeah, I, I have, John, one other time. <laughs> what was the other time? Mm, probably about 15 years ago. Yeah, well, well, yeah that, that year you had amnesia. <laughs> Here's Brian Eversgird. He's from uh, Centralia, Illinois, 6'1", 190 pounds, 25 years of age, and making his way through the uh, Cardinal system. 1989, he led uh, Kaskaskia College to a sectional championship. Through 17 innings in three days, Joe. Well, here's that uh, ball off the ankle again, hit by Milt Thompson. Look where it ended up. I mean, that one, that really hit him squarely. Well, it ended up in left field, and Tewksbury, you can see, he's in a lot of pain right there, but he wanted to stay in the ball game. Well, and then he got up and ran behind the plate. Yeah. But he's walking off, and you can see he doesn't want to put much pressure on that right ankle. 
Sunday night. We'll see the Phillies again this time up in Montreal. The Expos, the front runner for the wild card spot right now, but also battling the Braves for first. Led by Moise Salou, who is hitting 356. Dykstra and the Phillies, they had to hold off the Expos late last year. Now they're trying to catch them. Eight Eastern, five Pacific from L'Estat Olympique and Montreal next Sunday night. Well, here's Kevin Stocker now. Runners at first and third. Nobody out. One run is already in. Stocker already with a hit tonight. And he's got another one off the glove of Zeal. Coming in to score is Thompson. Stopping at second is Batiste. That's four consecutive hits in the inning. Stocker is two for two. Three one Phillies. Well, Evans Gerd's first pitch is a high fastball, and Stocker jumps right on it and lines it over the head of the third base, almost right off the tip of Zeal's glove. He almost came down with it, and if he would have, he would have had a double play because Thompson was way off the bag at third. Well, I think everybody in America thinks that uh, Jackson's bunting here, Joe. Well, they're going in to talk to Everett Gerd because he's probably not familiar with the signs that they're going to use or try to use here on whether they're going to put the rotation play on. So he wants to make sure that he knows that's Todd Zeal the third baseman normally gives the signal on that play after he gets it from the manager, Joe Torrey. Danny Jackson has had four sacrifice bunts this year. Round to the shortstop in his first at bat tonight. The first base side. Nicely done. Evers good to Jeffries. The runners have advanced. Batiste to third. Stocker to second. Well, I'll say this. After the conversation, they still got it wrong. Zill was charging. Ozzie Smith was not going any place. Usually, if the third baseman charges, the shortstop will go over to cover third. Now, watch Zill is charging, and nothing else is going on. Ozzie Smith is not moving, so they still were not in sync on what was supposed to happen with that play. Two. Runners at second and third. Batiste at third. Stocker at second. The infield pulled in at the corners. That curveball from Eversgrid. See much higher uh, Jugs gun readings with Eversgrid than you saw with Tewksbury. The off speed pitch. So they're deep at shortstop and second. Smith and uh, Pena, respectively, but pulled in at the corners. Zeal at third and Jeffries at first. To Jeffries. He's going to go home. Beat the throw. Three to one, Phillies. It's not a bad play by the Cardinals defensively. This is a good base running play by Batista. They're obviously going on contact, so as soon as the ball is hit, he takes off for the plate. McGriff tried to block the plate, but he couldn't. Right there, he's going immediately. Jeffries comes down, fires to the plate. He just beats it. So you have to give the base runner credit there before McGriff can get back for the tag. Batista's foot is already across the base. Good play there by the Phillies. So a fielder's choice and a run battered in for Dykstra. Here is Mickey Morandini. They've got some uh, things that could happen here, Joe. Dykstra's a, a very fine base dealer at first. Stocker's got pretty good speed at third. Cardinals have to decide what they're going to do if Dykstra runs. And the guy is pretty handy with the bat. Morandini at the plate. Only one out. Popped him up. Tazi Smith. And that is out number two. Morandini now 0 for 2 with a sacrifice bunt. Stocker had to hold at third. Dykstra hanging uh, tight at first. And that will bring up John Cruck. Bob Tewksbury charged with all three of the runs in this inning. Book is not closed on him. He gave up four runs and seven hits in his three plus innings. Strike 
one to Crook. Round to the second. Round to the first. One to one. The Phillies leading the Cardinals here in the fourth inning. This is the way they did it last year. The Phillies getting production from up and down the lineup. But the other good thing that they've done today is they've had good base running from all parts of the lineup, from the top to the bottom, to run the base as well, and that's important. Strike. Brian Eversger facing John Crook. Dalton would be next. Two down, two on. Crook, the eighth batter of the inning. It's in there, base hit. Stalker has scored. Dykstra in a second. John Crook bails a lot more against left-handed pitching than he does against right-handed pitchers, but he keeps the bat back, lines us to left field. Here comes Gilke, but he can't get there. But he does a good job of keeping the ball in front of him. Now here is Dalton. Four runs have scored. It is five to one, Phillies. And that was a good swing there by Dalton. He got the fastball out over the middle of the plate, and he really good, took a good rip at it. Just got under it. Dalton is grounded to second. He's flying to shallow right. Phillies RBI leader. Left-hander against left-hander here. There's a high drive. Way back there. Jordan now at the warning track. Makes the catch at the wall. Same pitch. He just got that out on the bat a little bit, a little toward the end. So the inning is over, and the Phillies have scored four times. We head to the fifth inning. Ozzy Smith will be coming up. Five to one, Phillies. When you come to a Pet Boys Super Center, you'll be amazed by its size. They've got over 24,000 items, all with brand names you know and trust. Many with lifetime warranties. Raybestos, Borg Warner, TRW, Gabriel, Purolator, CR, and Bendix. Everything you need to keep your car looking good and running smoothly. Day or night, even on Sunday, come to Pep Boys and drive away happy. 441. No, no, that's not it. 451. No, that's that stupid screen pass. I can't remember the number. I better call an audible. <clears throat> call Candace. So, Steve, you got the tickets? Okay, Candace, here's the deal. I got five on the 40 for the 14th, three on the 15th. So the 30th, good with six numbers. On the 40 for the 14th again. Call now for the revolutionary voice activated phone card. Only from Sprint. Savannah No Wrinkle Pants with Process 2000. They're not the only 100% cotton no wrinkle pants. They're the only ones that'll stay that way. It's because they're the ones made with our exclusive Process 2000. It's washed in, and unlike others, it lasts for the life of the pants. Savannah, the original no wrinkle pants with Process 2000. The only no wrinkle pants that'll stay that way. Hey, with that great zesty sauce, irresistible blend of cheeses, and mounds of mouth-watering toppings. You can't help it. Five to one, the Phillies now ahead of the Cardinals. The Cardinals are with a long way yet to go. That shot of the vet here, provided by the MetLife Blimp, which is co-piloted by Snoopy, dressed as the famous World War I flying aids tonight. Rather than searching the skies for the Red Baron, Snoopy is enjoying the ball game here at Philadelphia's Veterans Stadium. Hey, would I make that up? <laughs> Here's Ozzie Smith. He lined out to left center his first time. And uh, Eversgird, the pitcher, will follow. And then leadoff man Bernard Gilkey against Danny Jackson. Oz takes a strike. 
count. Well, Ozzy is now 39 years of age. And he is off to the slow start. He's been an important man in this lineup these last uh, three or four years. That one hit Jackson. Stocker retrieves, and let's see how Jackson is. Uh, Ozzy Smith with the infield hit. Well, Jackson looks like he's fine. Hope he's going out to. Well, most hit hitting coaches will tell you hit the ball back through the middle. A lot of holes back through the middle. But not so. This is a changeup, and he rips it back through the middle. Jackson takes it off the right shin. And it bounces away, and Stocker makes the play, but no chance to get Ozzy Smith at first base. It's like one of those old Western, uh, old John Wayne movies. Uh, you okay, Duke? <laughs> yeah, it just grazed me. <laughs> Ready got shot, but it just grazed him. Here's Eversgird. Looks at second. We'll go to first. That is Morandini covering. So Ozzie Smith has been moved along. Two to four. It's a catcher to the second baseman covering. Now Bernard Gilkey comes up. You know, Ozzie Smith, who he was trying to mention, he, he, I mean, he's always known for his great defensive work, but Last year he hit 288. The year before 295. The year before that 285. Always sitting up near the top of the order, getting a lot of walks, stealing a lot of bases. Stolen 99 bases the last three years. And they said, you know, it had come to the point where Ozzy was really more important to the Cardinals for what he did for their lineup, really, than what he did defensively. Become a key man at setting the table. Well, there you see the numbers you mentioned the last three years and now struggling a little bit here in 94. Well, there's a long way to go and I'm sure Ozzy will end up with having another good season. It's a ball outside Ozzy. Now with uh, 2,312 hits and he really would like to reach 2,500 before he retires. Twenty five hundred hits they get remembered as being pretty good hitters. You're right because twenty five hundred hits, hits are a lot of hit. Not you know the three thousand is a benchmark for great hitters. But twenty five hundred is a lot of hits. Chris Hazy, for all those years known as a guy who had a great glove and couldn't hit at all. He's proud of those uh, hitting numbers. Gilkey with a fly ball out in the right center field. Ozzie's going over to tag at second. The catch is made. Eisenreich throws in, but Ozzie eases into third base. And that's out number two. Now coming up on Tuesday, the big one for Lord Stanley's Cup. Pablo Verre, Mark Messier, the Canucks, and the Rangers. One team will be the champions of the NHL. The Rangers have not won it since 1940. The Canucks, they've never won it. In fact, you have to go back into the early days of the century to have a Vancouver team win any kind of a championship in the NHL. That will be Tuesday on ESPN. The batter, Geronimo Pena. Are those, are those guys wearing Canucks jerseys here in Philly? What about the Broad Street Bullies? <laughs> Brock to Jackson. Jackson obviously is fine after the ball grazed him. We've got Eisenreich, Thompson, and Batiste coming up. Hey, why are Dave and Jenny tonight? Clean it. What is it, oven cleaning night? <laughs> From comedy to romance, Blockbuster has 9,000 ways to enjoy the nightlife right at home. Those who don't know what they're missing. So instead of going out, Guys? make it a Blockbuster night. In normal Illinois, Gene Goble is popular with folks who need their car fixed. He does good work, and he doesn't charge an arm and a leg. Because when he needs auto parts, Gene buys a lot of them in AutoZone. You see, the prices are low every day at AutoZone. So a lot of good mechanics like Gene just pass the savings on to their customers. Plus, they can still get the best quality parts. Sure, they know how to do the work right, but they also know how to save money doing it at AutoZone. 
Every year, American business wastes millions of dollars on international calls by using the wrong long-distance company. Now you don't have to waste that money. Introducing MCI's Proof Positive Worldwide. Save up to 50% off typical international calls around the world. Call by June 30th and get one month of free long distance. Call MCI now and put your money back in your business. ESPN Sunday Night Baseball is brought to you by MCI, the company that brings you proof positive worldwide. And by the more than 800 AutoZone stores across America. AutoZone, the best parts in auto parts. The vet here in Philadelphia. ESPN Sunday Night Baseball. Will there be a World Series in this ballpark again in 1994. So far, it doesn't look that way, but the Phillies showing signs of life tonight on the big stage of Sunday Night Baseball. Here's Eisenreich already two for two, and now two for three as Witten takes care of it. Eisenreich earlier with a single and a double, and he started rallies each time. Now Milt Thompson, in fact, these number five, six, seven, eight hitters for the Phillies, Eisenreich, Thompson, Batiste, and Stocker, have now gone seven for eight with a sacrifice fly. Five runs scored and three RBIs. Bill Thompson, two for two with a run battered in it and a run scored. He takes ball one. In fact, both Eisenreich and Thompson have been uh, mentioned in a lot of trade rumors here lately. Veterans been around a long time. For a team in a pennant race. Well, both of them are very handy players because they both can pinch hit. Uh, Eisenreich plays very good defense. Milt Thompson offers some more speed. So you've got speed with Thompson and defense with Eisenreich. And both of them are pretty good hitters. That's a ball inside. One ball and one strike. Well, the Baltimore Orioles, a team without a left handed hitter on their bench. It's hurt them a couple of times. And they have reportedly been in the market for a left-handed uh, pinch hitter to come off that bench. And there have been reports that they've talked to the Phillies about these fellas. Chris Sabo, of course, asked the Orioles to trade him. And uh, the Orioles don't seem to be too anxious to do so. Sabo played left field at Fenway Park this weekend and played it beautifully. First time he'd ever played left field in his whole life. Sabo not playing third base. He got hurt, and uh, Leo Gomez went out and has uh, been hitting 330 in replacing uh, Sabo. Thompson bounces it foul up the first base side. And so apparently, a lot of other teams, too, have talked to the Phillies about uh, Eisenreich and Thompson. The Phillies, uh, in effect, have sort of an embarrassment of riches in these left handed hitters who can run well, play the outfield well, hit well. doing something that Tewksbury couldn't do. That's get Eisenreich and Thompson out. Of course, they don't often play in games against left-handed pitching like this. Well, he has a big advantage because of that. They do not see that many left-handed pitchers and probably haven't seen much of him at all. And he's throwing the ball very well. Looks like he has a good breaking ball. Eisenreich was fooled on the breaking ball when he hit the fly ball to right field. He got Thompson with a fastball in. This is Kim Batiste, strike one. Now, with a left-hander in there, we'd be seeing the likes more of uh, Mariano Duncan instead of Morandini in Cavilia instead of Thompson. And uh, maybe Ricky Jordan and Billy Hatcher instead of Eisenreich. The inning is over. Three up and three down. It'll be Jeffrey Zeal and Witten. The big guns coming up. Five to one, Phils. What has four wheels, luxury, value, performance, comfort, safety, and satisfaction built right in? It's a terrific deal from John Kennedy Chevrolet Oldsmobile Geo. Like the sleek Oldsmobile 88 Royale or the comfortable Oldsmobile Silhouette or the all-wheel drive Bravado with Smart Track and EDS brakes. Make the best of your driving experience and your buying experience. John Kennedy Chevrolet Oldsmobile. We do things differently. Viper arm. Protected by Viper. Stand back. 
Don't be caught off guard. Viper Auto Security Systems are available at One Stop Car Audio in McKee City. Your source for the absolute best in car stereo and auto alarms. We specialize in installation and service after the sale. One Stop Car Audio, Harbortown Plaza next to the McDonald's at the Cardiff Circle, Pleasantville. This is the number you call. This is the box that comes. This is the machine you get. This is the number you call. These are the exercises you do. This is how long it takes. This is how often you do it. This is the number you call. This is how you'll feel when you're done. The Soloflex Muscle Machine, just $39 a month. Call now for a free brochure and video. This is the number you call. Win ESPN Scout the Majors contest and you'll get tickets to four ESPN Sunday night games plus cash and a radar gun. To enter, call 1-900-84-SCOUT. 95 cents per call, no purchase or phone call necessary, you must be 18 or over. To enter by mail, hand print your name, address, age, and home phone on a 3x5 card and send it to ESPN Scout the Majors contest, P.O. Box 518, Hermosa Beach, California, 90254. ESPN Scout the Majors contest, sponsored by Body Heat Activated Degree Antiperspirant and Deodorant. to one Phillies over the Cardinals. Greg Jeffries coming up. We talked to him about whether he's in a good groove at the plate right now or not. It just seems like my timing's off a little bit right now. Uh, and the lucky thing is I'm scrapping a hit here and there, you know, so I'm still kind of lingering around uh, until I start feeling really good to play it again. And, and I'll know when I feel really good because I feel like I just wait back, wait as long as I can and pretty much do what I want to do with the ball. But there's times where you feel like, you know, you can't really react uh, correctly. He's hitting 329, so that's not too bad for a guy scuffling, huh? Yeah, that's interesting. <laughs> because I, as they say, so how soon we forget. I can remember when he would have been very happy to be hitting 300. But last year, his first with the Cardinals, he hit 342. And, of course, that's what was forecast for him when he first came up with the Mets. People just assumed that he would do that every year. Of course, with the Mets, he didn't. He hit 258, 283, 272. This trade to the Cardinals seemed to be the, really the best thing that ever happened to Jeffrey. It's a great ballpark for him. And uh, just great surroundings. He and Todd Zeal have become uh, fast friends, both on and off the field. Well, the first time I saw him with the Mets, I thought he was going to be a good hitter. And he had a good playoff season as a rookie. I mean, he was swinging the bat very well. He's always been projected to be a guy that could hit well over 300. And now he seems to be well on his way of putting three or four 300 seasons together. Sixth inning. Well, it's a good pitch from Jackson. He gets the ball away. Now watch how Jeffries kind of reaches for it. See, he's reaching out there because he was fooled on it. He was probably looking for something off speed, and it was a fastball tailing away. And he just slapped at it and hit a ground ball to first base. Jackson's doing a great job of keeping these hitters off balance, not so much with the change of speeds, but in and out. Here's Todd Zeal, and here's a guy who really is scuffling. 233. And uh, he has improved dramatically over third base. He's only made four errors so far this year. He did 33 last year. But now, where's the offense? Where's the beef? 103 runs batted in a year ago. So that was the same type of swing Jeffries had. He first pitched him and threw him a fastball inside. Then he went away with a fastball. And all Todd Zeal could do was just slap at it. So Jackson's keeping him off balance. Now back inside. So he's moving the ball around very well. And that's one of the reasons that the Cardinals only have the five base hits in this game. One ball and two strikes to Zeal. One away, nobody on. Sixth inning. Field line. By Thompson. Spectacular. Well, he, Zeal got a fastball up and out over the plate, and he drills it. This pitch is not in and it's not away. It's out over the plate, and he drills it. Thompson gets a good jump on it. Now watch this catch. Perfect timing, and he comes down with it. 
Two down and nobody on. Milt Thompson. And what a play. Mark Whitten. That is ball one. Whitten has twice struck out on pitches similar to that one. Sliders. Ironically, the only two strikeouts Jackson has recorded in the game. He's ahead five to one. Right field. Deep. Eyes and right. Gone. A home run. <laughs> Well, it really helps to be strong, doesn't it? Because he was, I said before, he was late on the fastball and ahead on the curveball. And this is a fastball. He's late on it, and it just looks like he has a flat-footed swing. But he's so strong, he hits it over the right field wall. Five to two, the fifth home out of the year for Mark Whitten. He had been one for 21 before this one. Now watch the pitch. It's a fastball away. And see how he's flat-footed? Now watch. There's nothing in this but arms. He's just so strong that he's able to hit it out of the ballpark. He didn't get any leg drive or any turn. It was just all arms. Now Brian Jordan hit a foul ball into the crowd. Well, I guess a guy who hits four homers and has 12 RBIs in a single game. I guess he can leap tall buildings with a single bound. There's a high fly ball. Stay in the park. Dykstra. And that's the end of Jordan now, one for three. One run for the Cardinals. It is five to two. We head to the last of the sixth inning. We'll be back. Think you're ready for the new La Quinta Inns? When you walk in, you experience a beautiful focal point of a bas-relief fountain on the wall of cast stone with a lion head spewing water. That's an architect's description for sure. When you enter the La Quinta lobby, you're going to get a sense of some different zones. Zones? You're going to have the business zone. I'd probably like to have that fountain. And the dining zone is for, the, of course, the continental breakfast. The new La Quinta. You're not staying at a hotel. You're staying with us. I'd like to take this lobby and stick it in my living room. <laughs> most complete source for auto parts. And all NAPA parts are backed by a nationwide warranty program. No wonder more Americans trust NAPA to keep their vehicles running. We keep America running. We keep America running. Baseball, the greatest game on earth, will never be the same. I'd like to announce that I've named myself the new manager of the Minnesota Twins. Go away. Questions? Castle Rock Entertainment is proud to present Little Big League. You mean you own the team and the stadium? When my grandpa died, all I got was a sweater. Little Big League. Rated PG. Special sneak preview Sunday afternoon, June 19th. If you're looking for a reliable place to service your car or truck, I've got great news for you. It's a Pep Boys Automotive Super Center. No matter what you drive, their ASC certified technicians are here when you need them, day or night, even on Sunday. For Raybestos brakes, TRW rack and pinion repair, diagnostic tune-ups, even air conditioning. For dealer quality service at prices you can afford, come to Pep Boys and drive away happy. Five to two, the Phillies lead the Cardinals last of the sixth ESPN Sunday Night Baseball from Philadelphia. This is John Miller along with Joe Morgan. Joe, who knows all of the best cheesesteak sub spots in town. <laughs> I guess there's not all of the best, Joe, because if it's the best, there's only one. You would know the best. Yes. Yeah. There's ball one to Kevin Stocker. He's two for two tonight. Shades of 93 for Stocker when he hits 324 for the Phils. The amazing thing about Stocker was they just wanted somebody to solidify the infield. He was hitting 233 in the minor leagues. Then they brought him to the big leagues and he hit 324. And people kept asking him, you know, what was the difference? How could that happen, Kevin? He kept saying, I, I just don't know. High fly ball, shallow. Convention out there, and Gilkey takes it, and that is out number one. Then I started thinking, well, maybe he was holding out on the guys at Triple A. Maybe he just wasn't trying hard enough, Joe. <laughs> he assured us that wasn't true. That's the view for the MetLife Blimp, providing aerial coverage of ESPN Sunday Night Baseball with help from co-pilot Snoopy. Met
Life's aerial ambassadors will attend over 70 sporting events and television specials this year. Look to the skies for Snoopy and the MetLife blimp. Here to quaff a few root beers, my dear. John, I wanted to make a point here. Last Sunday in Houston, Danny Jackson got on his some a couple of his teammates because they had lost the ball game, and a couple of them were laughing at a couple of private jokes. And Jackson went over and said, you better start taking this game more seriously. I'm tired of losing. And, and I thought that was good in the fact that Fregosi says when a player sees something wrong, he's supposed to say something. Managers shouldn't have to take care of every little thing in the clubhouse. But in doing that, now it was reported in the papers, and Jackson got very upset at the writers for writing about it. He said, what I say to my teammates should be private. Then most of his teammates thought that was hilarious yeah. when he got upset about it. Jim Eisenreich said, says, uh, hey, let me just say this. They put it in the paper about how he barked at a couple of his teammates. Well, he always does that. Yes, he does. That was the point. <laughs> that's, he does. Just, that's nothing new. But I think the problem is, the point I wanted to make here is what is private in the clubhouse and what is not. I think there needs to be a line drawn because what you say to your teammates in private, should that be in print? because it is said in the confines of the clubhouse and it wasn't done in an interview. That's a, the point is, I mean, I don't know if there's a right or wrong. From a player's well, perspective. Has that, has that changed? I mean, yes. when you played, yeah. it would have been held in confidence? Well, in a lot of cases it would have, but it's, it's, it's a matter of, of whether the players can trust certain writers now, and I think that's caused a problem, I guess, with the Phillies and that Jackson says some of these guys can't be trusted or whatever. I just find it a difficult, I find difficulty in trying to come to a conclusion of whether they were right or wrong. I don't, I don't know if they are. I don't know if there is an answer. Well, Darren Dalton's another guy who will not hesitate to, to park at teammates if he thinks they're, uh, they're not taking things seriously enough. I remember last year, right, around the end of June, early July, we came here for Sunday night baseball and Dalton had been getting on some of the pitchers who had a string of bad performances and he was very public about it. He'd dress him down to the mound and he'd dress him down to the papers. Well, that's fine. If you're doing that. Jackson is down on strikes. But Jackson's point was that he was talking to his teammates and not to the public. Two down, nobody on. We asked uh, Danny Jackson about the incident you're talking about, Joe. Here's what he said. We just have to make sure that we stay in a positive direction and not uh, accept any losing. Uh, once we start, or anyone starts accepting losing, then it's a lot easier to lose. And uh, uh, when you do that, uh, you know, you're defeated and, and you might as well pack it in. And there's Len Dykstra now. One for three with a run batted in. Two down and nobody on here in the sixth inning. Well, that's kind of like that, that fighting spirit. Never give in, never concede. It's, Jackson, one of those very intense guys now, and it looks to me, little Joe, like he's starting to be become a leader, not just to that pitching staff, but a guy who uh, is not afraid to speak up in the clubhouse. But will he when you're speak seven, up? And, when you're seven and one, you can do yeah, that. Yeah, but will he speak up if he knows it's going to be public? Is the point. There's a pop up, third base side. And Zeal takes it. Dykstra, one for four. Philly's gone quietly in the sixth. We're heading to the late innings now. McGriff, Smith, and Eversgird do up 5-1 Philly. It's a major breakthrough in auto protectant technology. Formula 2001 Super Protectant. It provides a more brilliant, longer-lasting shine than Armor All on vinyl and leather. And look, in the Arizona desert, Formula 2001 brought back the shine to UV faded vinyl. Rubber, even leather. Get the new standard in automotive protectant technology. Formula 2001, with 50% more active shining ingredients than Armor All. Get Formula 2001 products today. In normal Illinois, Gene Goble is popular with folks who need their car fixed. He does good work, and he doesn't charge an arm and a leg. Because when he needs auto parts, Gene buys a lot of them at AutoZone. You see, the prices are low every day at AutoZone. So a lot of good mechanics like Gene just pass the savings on to their customers. Plus, they can still get the best quality parts. Sure, they know how to do the work right, but they also know how to save money doing it at AutoZone. To soothe athlete's foot, to relieve the burning, the itching, Desinex does it. 
but to cure athlete's foot, to kill the fungus that causes it. Desinex does it. Only Desinex has UDA, proven to both soothe the itching and burning and cure even tough athlete's foot cases. To soothe and cure athlete's foot, Desinex does it all. And for jock itch, Cruex is the number one cure. Cruex cures jock itch. Rangers rallying in the eighth. They knock out David Cohn. Juan Gonzalez is the tying run with the bases loaded against Rusty Meacham. Coleman in, makes the diving catch. They've scored again in the ninth. They're up 7-2. to two. Rangers last at bat. Back to the vet. And next Sunday night, uh, we'll have more Sunday night baseball for you. Tonight, the Phillies leading the Cardinals 5-2. to two. Next Sunday, we'll follow the Phillies again. They will take on uh, Les Expos de Montréal. Then thanks to the Phillies, uh, Moises Alou, Marquise Grissom, Larry Walker, and the Expos. That's a big series for the Phillies, the National League champions, and, of course, the Expos intending to make a run for it in 94. And right now, the Phillies are chasing it. Here's a line drive by McGriff, right? to Kevin Stocker, and there is one away. John, I never get a chance to tell you that Terry McGriff is a cousin to Hello, Freddie McGriff yeah. <laughs> of okay. the Atlanta Braves, and I guess you're being fanatic. I'm, uh, I'm getting a shine here, Joe. <laughs> Hola, vaqueros. <laughs> Un partido de béisbol de Philadelphia. Bienvenidos a la partido de noche de <laughs> it's just kind of a good look for me. What do you think? Well, it works. It works. Howdy, ma'am. There's a swinging strike by Ozzie Smith. Well, you were giving a little John Wayne. Maybe a little Anthony Quinn would be. <laughs> Anthony Quinn? <laughs> I, mean, look, I saw him in some westerns. One ball and one strike to this kid. <laughs> Got a little tight with that one. But he comes back in there with a pitch like that again. Wow. Two and one the count. Oh, you wanted Anthony Quinn. Yeah, that's okay. John will do. The Duke will do. Two and two the count. Ozzie Smith is lined to left center. And he's had an infield single. I really feel like I've been to the vet now, Joe, that the Philly fanatic has come in and, you know, comb my hair for me. <laughs> two and two the count to Ozzie Smith. For some baseball, you know, you get a big sombrero like that, it's not a compliment. Oh, the golden? Yeah, yeah that's for strike. Was he Three your strike strikeouts. Out? Yeah. No, no, that's the hat trick. The golden sombrero oh. is four strikeouts. Yeah. I had the hat Three. trick. I didn't ever have the golden sombrero. Never? Never. Not ever? Ever, never, ever. Only then why did you retire? I only had the hat trick maybe twice. I can't figure why you retired then. Ozzy with a fly ball in left center field. Milt Thompson over his head. Ozzy will trot the rest of the way into second with a stand-up double. And the throw gets away. And Ozzy will take third. A double and then an error. Wow, he's hit the ball well tonight. It'll be an error against Stocker, the shortstop. And quietly, the Cardinals are creeping back into this ball game. If they can get Ozzie Smith in, then it's down to a two-run lead for the Phillies. Well, Ozzie hammers his fastball in the left center field. Thompson gets a good jump on it, but it's over his head. By the time the ball is thrown back in, Ozzie's at second with a double, but now the throw gets away from Stocker. Well, in that situation, Stocker should not try to catch the ball. Technically, you should just let it go, and then the second baseman would back you up. And that's probably why they gave the error to Stocker instead of the outfield, this although is, it was not a good throw. This is Stan Royer, pinch hitting now for Brian Eversgird. busy. Now breaking for the plate is Ozzy. The ball is there. They got it. That's 
that's a great play by Batiste because normally you go to the first base with that ball and take the out. He turned quickly and fired to the plate. Ozzie tried to slide around Dalton, but he missed the plate. And then Dalton went back and tagged him. And you watch very closely at home plate. Jerry Crawford does not make a signal safe or out. That means that he did not touch the plate. Now watch, Ozzy breaks right away, and normally you just go to first base with this. He throws sidearm, a tough play. Now watch Ozzy slide away. He is not tagged. No call by Jerry Coleman, I mean Crawford, and then he finally calls him out. Bernard Gilkey to left field, and Thompson's got it. The inning is over. I'd like to see him apply that tag the second time again, Joe. Well, <laughs> there you see him slide outside. I missed him there. Did he get him? I don't know. Every year, American business wastes millions of dollars on international calls by using the wrong long-distance company. Now you don't have to waste that money. Introducing MCI's Proof Positive Worldwide. Save up to 50% off typical international calls around the world. Call by June 30th and get one month of free long distance. Call MCI now and put your money back in your business. There are a lot of ways you can take an inexpensive, value-packed summer getaway. Whether this or this. There's always this. But then you can do this. This is an all-time favorite. Of course, so is this. It's your choice. This or America's best vacation value, Las Vegas. An amazing place at an amazing price. Back when we started making tires, most Americans stayed pretty close to home. Well, then the car came along, and highways got bigger and better. And in time, people could actually drive from sea to shining sea. And through it all, we made tires for just about any car anybody might use to discover America. Kelly Springfield, America's oldest tire company. Five to two, the Phillies over the Cardinals, and Ozzie Smith out at home in a close play. We got a couple of other angles, I think, that are rather revealing here. Joe? Now watch, it looks like Dalton tags him on the shoulder, but maybe not. You can't really tell now. Jerry Crawford says he didn't. Now Ozzie Smith reaches for the plate. He misses the plate right there. Now Dalton tags him, and he's out. See, his, you look like, now watch Ozzy Smith. We'll see his hand. When he comes by, watch Jerry Crawford doesn't make a call. That means that there's no tag of, of the plate or the batter, or the runner. Now watch Ozzy Smith stick his hand out. He will stick his hand right here. It will not touch the plate right there. See, he is not on the plate. Now he is tagged out, and then he puts his hand on the plate right there. So Jerry Crawford stayed with the plate, and he saw the tag by Dalton at the end. Attempt at daring do in the base pass, but it didn't work out. It was a good attempt by Ozzy to avoid the tag because the throw definitely beat him. But when he reached back, he did not grab the plate. I like the way uh, Dalton also stuck his uh, foot back there. He wasn't there as he re received the ball. Rob Murphy, the new pitcher, on to face Mickey Morandini, John Cruck, and Darren Dalton. Three lefties in a row. Catcher will do that. They'll stick their shin guard out there. They wouldn't stick it out there if they didn't have a shin guard. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, he, he kind of left himself exposed there. I yeah. guess he figured, well, Ozzy's not a guy who's going to go in and try to break his leg. There's John Cruck on deck. John, that reminds me of a story. John Cruck. What I'll tell you is, Ozzy takes this pop-up. Bill Russell, a former Celtic basketball player, used to tell me a story about Gene Conley, who pitched you know, in, in the big leagues and also played for the Celtics. And you said John Cruck told that his quote says, he's not an athlete, he's a ball player. Well, Bill Russell said Gene Conley would play basketball, and then he'd have to get out of shape so he could go pitch in the big leagues. <laughs> so that kind of reminds me of John Cruck. He says he's not in shape. Gene Conley said he had to get out of shape to play baseball. Well, there are some people who watched him pitch with the Red Sox in those days who thought he was out of shape. <laughs> thought he pitched like a guy out of shape. John Cruck, one for three. Single home run in the fourth inning. They 
facing the left hander Rob Murphy. Chased a real high one there. That kind of looks like the swing he had against Landy Johnson in the All Star game last year. That those swings were kind of embarrassing for a good hitter like John Crutch for an All Star game. Yeah. A little comic relief, I guess. A lot of his teammates on the National League didn't think it was that. Johnson, you know, he had three straight shutouts these last couple of weeks. For the Mariners. The heir apparent to Nolan Ryan. Well, John Crook. A whole two months like that all yeah. started bad against Randy Johnson. Well, he probably has not had enough at bats against left-handed pitching to feel comfortable. And look at this. I mean, he's like just out of it. No chance to hit either. Here's Darren Dalton. Round to the second, flying to shallow right and flying deep to right center. This is the Phillies' 63rd game of the year. It is the 56th game which he has started. Well, as you mentioned earlier, you, you get a guy like he and Johnny Bent, you just keep putting their names in the lineup. It's very difficult when you have a catcher who is that good not to put him in the lineup, even though you know you should give him some rest sometime. I mean, it's real difficult to take that bat out of the lineup. Plus his leadership from being just behind, being behind the plate and controlling the game. Dalton leads the club in home runs and RBIs. Side right past Larry Boa, the coach over there. Two down, nobody on. Darren Dalton, what did he start last year? 143 games he started at catcher. And they swore this winter that they were going to give him more rest this year. Talked about, well, maybe he'll play some first base occasionally. Hasn't happened. In the outside corner. Murphy, very impressive here in the seventh against the lefties. Pena, Jeffries, and Zeal. Cardinals running out of time. All right, Chief. Hope and white. Come on. Look, Daddy loves corn pops. See? Mmm. 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 And here he comes. The problem with a cereal that tastes like popcorn, only sweeter, is that it disappears like popcorn, only faster. You all finished? Good boy. Uh, he may want seconds. Kellogg's Corn Pops. It's hard to stop when it's pops. Savannah No Wrinkle Pants with Process 2000. They're not the only 100% cotton No Wrinkle Pants. They're the only ones that'll stay that way. It's because they're the ones made with our exclusive Process 2000. It's washed in, and unlike others, it lasts for the life of the pants. Savan, the original no wrinkle pants with Process 2000. The only no wrinkle pants that'll stay that way. This summer, beat the heat. Wally has. Because his house is cooled by Carrier, the world's most energy efficient air conditioner. It keeps him cool and saves you money. In fact, Carrier is so energy efficient, it can save you up to 60% on your cooling bills. So stay cool, save money. Call Carrier. We're the inside guys. Hey, who's Poodle? Five to two, the Cardinals trailing the Phillies as we head to the eighth inning. John Crock, a strikeout victim there against the left-hander Rob Murphy. And this pitch is away, and Crook steps towards first base. He's really bailing on this. You see, he has no chance of hitting the ball toward the outside corner. You know, that brought back a memory to me, Joe. Last July, Camden Yards, Randy Johnson throwing that real heat. Well, these pitches, at least they're on the middle of the plate in. He had no chance at any of those either. He was on the outer part of the box and out, <laughs> uh, though. He was the more uh, down the middle of those pitches were the further away he got. Yes. Here's Geronimo Pena against Danny Jackson. Pena two for three with a bunt single. But there are a few hitters in the American League that have Randy Johnson-itis. Man. They like to take the day off when he pitches. When he's on, throwing strikes, I mean, he can be virtually unhittable. 
Jackson has averaged seven innings per start this year. Remember his record coming in seven and one. This is his 14th start. He's had three complete games already. Jackson last year went 12 and 11 for the Phillies. And 32 starts had only two complete games all year. But his role has become increasingly more important for the Phillies this year with all the injuries to the other starters. States World Cup USA primetime special coming up tomorrow 930 Eastern 630 Pacific and ESPN's coverage of the world's premier sporting event will then uh, get into a uh, high dungeon on Friday June 17th the games will begin defending champion Germany takes on Bolivia 255 Eastern there's a base hit for Greg Jeffries his first of the night He's one for three with a run battered in now bring up Zeal. These are the guys that they're going to get back into this game. You would figure they've got to make their run right now. Well, last inning, the run at third, that they lost at the plate with Ozzie Smith was very important because then it's, you know, Todd Zeal would represent the tying run. So it was very important, the play made by Batiste, to throw Ozzie Smith out at the plate. Billy's bullpen is busy. As Danny Jackson works here in the eighth inning. Zeal is in a double play ball, grounded a short and lined to left with no Thompson making the play of the night. Leaping catch. A strike call to the outside. Nice pitch there by Jackson right on the outside edge. Well, that was a sinker, John. He's trying to get the ground ball so they can get maybe get a double play and get out of it. So you'll see more sinkers to Zeal in this at bat than you will the straight fastball and the riding fastball. the tying run possibly and he homered his last time off well his first at bat he was struck out with a circle change and I said he was off balance the entire at bat look at that now this is another fastball sinker away and that's the home run that was a sinker away and he's so strong he was able to hit it over the right field wall so here's with one for three off the fists Stocker against Jeffries. And Jackson gets through the big part of the order. Eisenreich, Thompson, and Batiste coming up. Five to two, Philly. Hey, you know my crew spends hundreds of hours building those 5,000 horsepower motors? I can explode one in five seconds. And when that happens, nobody eats. That's why my guys won't run anything but Fram fillers. You know, Fram gets the nasty stuff out of the oil, so I can go to the other end with my candles lit. And you know, that's in about five seconds, nearly 300 miles an hour. You can look at these guys and see they eat pretty near every day. Panasonic presents a unique and highly evolved smooth operator. The Smooth Operator 2 with float control is the only razor to unite the comfort of twin independent floating heads with the closeness of a warm, wet shave. Don't try this with any plugged-in razor. The Smooth Operator wet-dry razors from Panasonic. Smoother than you ever thought you'd be. Which central air conditioner is one step ahead? Everyone who knows scroll compressors are superior to standard compressors take one step forward. Everyone who knows scroll compressors are longer lasting and quieter take one step forward. Now everyone who uses scroll compressors in every air conditioner and heat pump they make take one step forward. 100% scroll puts Ream one big step ahead of the competition. Call today for the Ream difference. champion in Philadelphia 5, the Cardinals 2 on Sunday Night Baseball. Now, Tuesday night, Pavel Bure and the Vancouver Canucks head to New York 
New York to face Mark Messier and the Rangers. And one team with a date with destiny there. Eight Eastern, five Pacific. The Canucks have never won the Cup, and the Rangers have not won it in 54 years. Coverage begins with a preview at 7.30, then the game, the opening face-off at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. The Canucks and the Rangers for the Stanley Cup. New pitcher for the Cardinals, John Habian. He's come on now in relief of Rob Murphy, who went one perfect inning. And Habian, look how many games he's been in. The Cardinals are playing their 59th game. Habian is making his 32nd appearance. Murphy made his 30th. This has been the busiest bullpen in the National League. Starting pitching has not been that very strong, and they've made more appearances and pitched more innings than any other bullpen. Jim Eisenreich, a single, a double, two runs scored. He started each of the Philly rallies. That's a ball. One ball and one strike to Eisenreich. He'll be followed by Milt Thompson. Kim Batiste. These have really been the big men tonight for the Phillies in the lineup. Eisenreich, Thompson, Batiste, and Stalker. They've had nine hits, and they've given uh, this man, Danny Jackson, more than enough offense to take him into the last of the eighth inning, a hit by three. Meanwhile, the Phillies' closer, Doug Jones, has started warming up in the bullpen. Speaking of Philly closers, you know, last year at this time, it was Mitch Williams, and I read an article that Bob Watson had made the comment that if Mitch Williams was more adaptable, he'd still be with the Astros. He said Mitch Williams only wanted the ball in the ninth inning with the game on the line, and they couldn't afford to continue to do that. So there's another base hit for Eisenreich, his third of the game. It's skipping across the turf. Eisenreich heading for second. is perfect against right-handed pitching tonight. He had that one at bat against Eversgard where he popped up, but he's had two doubles and a single, and all of them off of pitches out over the plate. He likes the ball out over the plate. That pitch was down and out over the plate. Nice play in center field by Jordan to cut it off and keep it from going to the wall, but he can't hold Eisenreich to a single. Eisenreich hustling all the way, goes in with a double. And here is Milt Thompson now. He also has had two hits up till now. Two singles, a run battered in. Thompson, who uh, played for a few years with the Cardinals, from 1989 through 92, and hit 290 or better in three of his four years there. Just a guy who never really has had the everyday job, but he's been a real important man on, on a ball club, both with the Phillies and with the Cardinals. Well, that's a foul ball. And you can see Milt Thompson trying to pull the ball to the right side to move Eisenreich over to third base. So there uh, a moment ago on the update, the final score from Texas of the game which we were watching earlier while we were in the rain delay here. The Kansas City Royals defeated Texas 7-2. And David Cohn is the first 10-game winner in the American League. A few hours after Greg Maddox became the Major League's first 10-game winner, Cohn went seven and two-thirds innings, gave up no earned runs, but three hits, two unearned runs scored against him. He is 10 and two for Hal McRae's Royals. Last year he was 11 and 14 for the whole year. He might do a little better this year. Milt Thompson inside, two and two the count. These guys, this is part of the order, Eisenreich, Thompson, Batiste, Stocker, hitting numbers five through eight in the order, have had eight of the Phillies' ten hits. They've scored all of the runs. And down goes Milt Thompson for the uh, first Habian strikeout. One away, Eisenreich still at second. Kim Batiste coming up. He's one for two with a run battered in and a sacrifice fly. Kim Batiste. Last year, uh, he became, I guess, rather infamous. He became famous in a way he didn't want to be. He kept 
using him as a late inning defensive replacement at third base in the league championship series against Atlanta, putting him in there for Dave Hollins. And he kept nicking errors after they brought him in. And he's had a hard time of it so far this year with Hollins now on the disabled list. Batiste has made six errors, only driven in seven. comes back there's talk of putting him in the outfield now I figure he's better off in the outfield than playing third base chase the high fastball and didn't get it one ball and two strike or one ball and one strike to Batiste this was game one of the league championship series uh oh Batiste and in game five Rod Gant hits one to him None of those cost the Phillies a loss, you know, to lose a game. They bounced back very well in those ball games. And Mitch Williams was the one put in trouble in one of the ball games, so he pitched out of the jam. One ball and two strikes now to Kim Batiste. Sports Center, right after the ball game, Sunday conversation with Jack Nicholas, the Rockets and the Knicks, game three highlights. And the Braves and the Astros. Greg Maddox won number 10 today. And all of the baseball highlights. The Minnesota Twins, they swept the White Sox this weekend at the Metrodome. Batiste chased it. And it's another strikeout for Habian. Two down here in the eighth inning. Stocker coming up. Big breaking ball from Habian. And Batiste just chases it. You can see it's breaking wide of the plate. That's an ugly swing right there. <laughs> Even with two strikes. <laughs> but it looked ugly when it pitches two feet outside. Yeah. Well, they're going to walk Stocker, who is two for three tonight. And, uh, but Danny Jackson is not out on deck. Instead, it is Tony Longmire. So Jackson is finished for the night with Jones getting ready in the bullpen. Jackson wearing his jacket back in the dugout. There he is. Well, eight strong innings for Jackson tonight. Gave up eight hits. And he really spread them out. Gave up two hits in the first inning and never more than one hit in any inning after that. And uh, this guy who used to have so many problems with his control walked only one batter. Well, he has been pitching very well lately, and, and what happens again is with that new pitch, the changeup, you get hitters swinging at more bad pitches than before. If you can add a third pitch to your repertoire, you'll get more people swinging at another pitch, chasing it out of the strike zone. You don't have to throw as many strikes. Now, Johnny Padres, the pitching coach of the Phillies, he had one of the great changeups that anybody ever saw in his days with the, the Dodgers in Brooklyn and in L.A., and is a great teacher of same. I think I swung in one of Padres' changeups about three times one day, all on the same pitch. He had such great, great motion. Now, did you get the golden sombrero that day? No, because I didn't strike out. I just swung at that one pitch three times. They can only call it one strike. Well, if they thought of it, they could. They might have given you the sombrero for that. Great changeup. Catcher McGriff kept the ball out in front, and Havian retrieved it. Two men on, two men out of the eighth inning. The Phillies lead five to two. The Cardinals ninth inning featuring Brian Jordan, Terry McGriff, and Ozzie Smith. At least those are the do-ups. However, on the bench, they've got Ray Lankford, a left-handed hitter, and Gerald Perry, a left-handed hitter. We might see both of them with the right-handed Doug Jones getting ready to come in. Lankford not being in the lineup tonight. And we haven't had much of a chance to talk about him. What a year he's having. center field. That one is way back there. It will go to the wall. Eisenreich scores. Here comes Stocker. He scores. A double for Longmire. Seven to two Phillies. Joe Torrey probably thought Jim Fregosi may have been bluffing when he had Doug Jones warming up, and he did not think that they were going to pinch hit. 
for Jackson. This pitch is out over the plate. He turns on it, hits it hard in the left center field. And it bounces off the wall. The Phillies get a break that it did not bounce over the wall. There's a high drive by Dykstra down the right field line into the corner. Well, I don't know either. I got caught. Foul ball. He did not catch it. Foul ball. Since everyone's remaining on the field, we'll assume it was a foul ball. Now we take a look at Whitten down in the corner trying to make the catch. He leaps and he can't come down with it. It's over the bench there down the right field line. That was, uh, that was starting to become a, a great mystery there, Joe. Well, there was no signal from the umpire. Len Dykstra, one for four in the game with a run battered in. One ball and one strike. Seven to two in the Phillies now. Longmire with a pinch hit double. Longmire. Considered a great prospect in the Phillies farm system. Runs well. Pretty good bat. He's now 5 for 17 as a pinch hitter. Now Doug Jones has taken a seat in that Phillies uh, bullpen. Change up misses from Haby. And Heathcliff Slocum is back up out there. So yeah. this is no longer a save situation. So they may not want to use Jones anymore. Right. It's not a save situation. The five run lead. Jones could not come into the game in the ninth inning and get a save. I guess they're saying that with a five run lead, you can go down and pitch and hold the lead, right? I could be the setup man. Yeah. I could throw oh, my get a hold, right? I'd throw my circle change. <laughs> Len Dykstra. He's a leadoff man, but he is second in the league in extra base hits. You know, he's at 25 doubles this year. Three triples, five homers. In the right center. Witten going back. He's there. And that's the inning. Two runs against Haby. And we go to the ninth inning. Last chance for the Cardinals. But now they're down by five. Seven to two. Philadelphia. The first thing I did when I came to the United States was find a soccer game. Of course, in Colombia, it's more than a game. It's your passion. It's your life. La vida. <laughs> I played with some of the guys there since I was a little chiquillo. With MCI's friends around the world, you can call all the people you care about more often. I speak to my old goalie at least once a week. Because you save on your international calls every day. He also happens to be my brother. You let three goals in? Oh, man. I think it needs me down there. <laughs> Join friends around the world anytime. The easiest way to call, the easiest way to save. Seattle. Average rainfall, 39 inches. Phoenix, average high, 103 degrees. Minneapolis, average low, 7. Every year, Anderson windows and patio doors stand up to the harshest sun, the coldest wind, the hardest rain. So much for the law of averages. Gator back. It gobbles up everything from wet leaves to paper cups, even pine cones and aluminum cans. Whoa. And with the turn of a knob, it converts to an equally powerful blower. Cool. So put trash in its place. Mom, Dad, what a pleasant surprise. The new VIP Gator back from Weed Eater. Sunday night baseball from the vet and for the Phillies and their fans, it's like old times, like 1993. Doing it all beautifully, great defense, timely hitting. That's the uh, MetLife blimp. Aerial shots of Veterans Stadium, the surrounding area being provided by the MetLife blimp. Snoopy One, MetLife's aerial ambassador, typically cruises at an altitude of 1,200 feet and a speed of 35 miles per hour. Kind of a lot like driving with Joe Morgan. <laughs> Heathcliff Slocum. And he's been a big man out of that Philly bullpen. Yeah, bo both he and Doug Jones have done a tremendous job for the Phillies, especially, you know, due to the fact that their starting pitching had not pitched as well as they expected. Well, with a 7-2 ball game now, here's Brian Jordan. He'll swing for himself here. One for three in the game. Gerald Perry, though, has come out of the on-deck circle. And the Cardinals pinch hitter deluxe the last couple of years. Gerald Perry. 
Jordan singled back in the fourth inning and has twice flied out to Dykstra. How's this one back? Oh, and one. That's one of the uh, message boards here at Philadelphia. <laughs> yeah. Sports Center is next. Patrick's uh, Sports Center dream highlight to have Sports Center next with the theme on the message board at the event. I'll bet that was it, Joe. Somebody's dream came true tonight. One ball and two strikes to Brian Jordan. Keith Oberman and uh, Mike Tarico standing by tonight. at the uh, NBA game at Madison Square Garden. A little too busy to work Sports Center tonight. Brian Jordan in the ninth inning. A lot of the folks have started to head home here from the vet. Great crowd here. Strike three call on the inside corner. That's not what Jordan thought. Jerry Crawford gets a near full from Jordan. Now a pinch hitter will come up. Well, we'll take a look and let you be the judge. Of course, Jordan thought the ball was inside. Crawford said no. Here's Gerald Perry. And that's a ball, Perry. Six for 21 as a pinch hitter this year, a 286 average. Seven runs battered in in that role. Mean looking pitch, dipping down like a like a fork ball. One strike to Perry. Luis Alisea has come out on deck. Down the left field line. Base hit to the wall. Thompson has to give chase. And Perry has his seventh pinch hit of the year. I tell you what, Perry is just like his cousin Dan Dreesen, who played for the Reds. He can hit. It's a fastball up and out over the plate, and he just rips it down the left field line. And watch, it's a fastball up and away, and he lines it down the left field line. Good hitters do that. And he has himself a double, as you can see. Good hitting there by Perry, but again, he's a good hitter. He's been a good hitter for a long time. That's his 79th career pinch hit. Last year, Perry had 24 pinch hits for the Cardinals. 24 for 70. This is Luis Alisea pinch hitting for Ozzie Smith. Alisea had a home run the other night as a pinch hitter. Three run shot. They're in the ninth inning here. The vet. Ozzie Smith, by the way, went two for three tonight. There's Ray Lankford. He's come out on deck to bat for Habian. One out. Runner at second here in the ninth inning. Heath Cliff Slocum trying to wrap it up for Danny Jackson. Throwing about 192 miles an hour with that fastball. Three and oh, the count. Alisea hitting only 231 overall. So amazingly, well, Alisea's had 105 at bats for the whole year, hitting only 231, but he has five triples. Playing the spacious Bush Stadium, that part was built for triples. It wasn't really built for a lot of home runs. going to take the turf out of Bush Stadium. Is it next year or the year after? And also uh, Kaufman Stadium in Kansas City. Minus turf beginning next year. That's a strike. Three and two now to Ali Sayan. He's a switch hitter. Heath Cliff Slocum from uh, Jamaica, New York. in uh, New York City. 
Fly ball to center. Dykstra. Number two. 48,682. The paid crowd tonight at the vet. Great crowd. With the Phillies struggling, they reached a million this year in their home attendance at the earliest date in the history of the franchise. And tonight they passed 1.2 million in their home attendance. The average crowd here this year has been better than 37,000. Well, here's Ray Lankford. I had a chance to see Bill Giles, one of the owners of the Phillies. And Bill and I started in this game together a long time ago with the Houston Colt 45. Ray Langford, he's been the Cardinals' big hitter this year. 291, 13 homers, 32 batted in. You remember when we opened the season with the Major League opener at Cincinnati way back on April the 2nd? Ray Langford was the first hitter of this season, and he hit a home run to start the season off against Jose Rio. And we should have known that was a forecast of things to come. A lot of home runs this year. 93 miles an hour on that last fastball from Heathcliff. Well, now Dalton goes out to talk to uh, Slocum after that pitch. The crowd now rising to its feet all around Veterans Stadium. Hoping to uh, bring this one to a conclusion. Salud, Marquise Grissom, and the Expos, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. We'll see you then. Final score tonight, 7 to 2, the Phillies. Danny Jackson wins it. He's 8 and 1. Sports Center coming up next. John Miller for Joe Morgan saying, Good night, everyone.